This is Wild Phil with Wild Phil's Osophy. Today is going to be an extra deep, special, traumatic, and hilarious episode. Uh, we're going to talk about death, grieving, trauma, all the good shit. All the good shit. So, but we're going to start off as we usually do, just shooting this shit and an update on the week. Anything new? Anything new, Carlos? Yes. Um, I went to go do a, a job at some uh, people's house that were just uh, very neurotic, mm-hmm. little out there. Um, it's one of these people that that had like a just a generalized paranoia to everything. Like generalized paranoia? Were they Polish? Probably. I didn't see the last name. I've tried. Yeah, no, they they definitely. Uh, I've tried to describe paranoia. <laughs> to any of my Polish relatives, and they're just oh, you oh, mean thinking? What do you mean? This is this is this is just Polish. It's like how Italians are like, we're not yelling. This is how we talk. <laughs> Polish people are like, we're not. We are not paranoid. This is you know, it's from communism. They are attacking from every direction. Yeah. So it was. It was. They were. Uh, they were concerned about all the chemicals in the cleaning stuff. They were. Yeah. They, they wrapped. A, when I got up there, they wrapped the whole fucking room I was working in in plastic and taped it up. So it kind of felt like fucking American Psycho. Yeah. Like, do you like jazz, Carlos? I was expecting it. But the guy was trying really hard to stay away from me, but also follow me around. Yeah. And every time I, if I drilled in the wall, he goes, you know, you don't want him, you don't want that drywall dust to come out. And, you know, that stuff has a uh, partial asbestos and all this stuff. I'm like, that, that's beginning to start Jewish to me. Sound Jewish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, does, they do, it did sound Jewy. You realize that every time you talk like a little bitch, you just assume Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they were they were freaking out, man. And I I I went there, and I'm thinking it's Friday. It was the last day of work. I was working. It was a small little job, and I was like, I'll be in and out of here in 45 minutes. And the whole ordeal turned into two and a half hours because this guy wanted me to read every fucking label on the on the things on the chemicals I was using to clean, and he wanted me to make sure every time I drilled that I got every little scrap up with my vacuum. And he's fucking paranoid. And at the very end, there's these rods that I have to hang. And it was like an eighth inch too big. So I took it outside and I cut it. Came back in. I had some steel shavings. And the guy went into a, an actual panic attack. He's like, oh, God. There's, oh, God. There's metal shavings on it. Oh, my God. Did you did you do that outside? I'm like, I did it outside. He goes, yeah, but you got to make sure wherever you walk, I got to make sure because those little metal shavings, they go in your feet. And they, they, they burrow in your feet. And you don't know they're there. And after a, some amount of time, you can get cancer in your feet. I'm, like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I, I got to go because the amount of uh, of eggshells that I have to walk on to just do this job. Not metal shavings? Not metal shavings. No, eggshells. Well, you got to wash out the eggshells. No, dude, I just left. And then he, he called and, uh, and he said that I was very rude. He left and you a bad rating? He left me a bad a review. Oh, Christ. And I, I, was, I was coming here in my work sweater. Yeah. I just took it off in the car. I put this one on. And I was like, oh, this guy's going to fucking peruse through my facebook page and try to figure out where i work you know what what, what i'm saying about him oh well, that's the guy i, I don't know I just... put, the, put the mic like this close sorry like this yeah yeah, yeah. all right you don't have to leave two hands or one <laughs> but yeah no that was balls, under the balls <laughs> Whoop. that's it man and the rest of the week was uh fucking stood home and didn't do much but that that stu- that stuck with me for <laughs> the weeks because i actually never thought one another person can actually put me in a state of like anxiety he literally brought up my uh heart my blood pressure up just fucking being with him and his wife was just sitting in the kitchen like <laughs> you know it's keeping her distance and i'm just thinking dude how's this guy procreate because he has a kid I'm like does he have to like wrap his wife in a and just open a little hole <laughs> the vagina is just yeah, have a little fucking tablecloth wrap, put some fucking hand sanitizer all Something. over that plastic tarp and you can't go through life you know these, these these pube shavings they could get in your foot in, the, in the, <laughs> but uh, yeah that's I guess it, I guess it's a similar ridiculous experience that I had working because you know I've been Ubering a shit ton yeah and all right three amazing experiences first one I'll start off with is I got my first one star review there are all five except one and it brings you like out of like a hundred people. One fucking bad star drops you, brings you to four point ninety, and it was because I was listening to Legion of Skanks in the car. Oh my god! So they, were, they, I, I don't know if it was that. They, I think it was uh, Stavros. You know who Stavros is? 
Stavros Halkias. He's on Come Town. He's like a fat Greek. I know. Dude. Who, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a skull. I, I know. I know who. I know. I know. Come Town. I, I look to them. They were they they were talking about how priests get away with fucking kids, which <laughs> yeah, is completely, so... other than disturbing, true. You know. <laughs> so and I don't know, but but yeah, like she left some reviews saying like the the radio was absolutely disturbing. Those are the exact words. Oh, so God. that's fucking hilarious. So so this. So wait, I'm just curious. What, did you have it really loud, or just for you to hear? Or? Just for me to hear. Just for me to hear. And 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 I literally every. Pr- so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm not even joking I'm not even trying to be funny I'm gonna print a laminated paper hang it on the back of the fucking front seat that says please let me know if you are offended by podcasts otherwise no it's why not yeah why not because why not because because then it'll just take the fucking anxiety off of me you know yeah be like all right get out mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, that's ridiculous but so that's but the fir- what see what what warrants that review why not just tell you hey you know what listen this is not too, this i don't like this because why not just people got off? anxiety no we're not that we're not a confrontational person and you, and you. Oh, so what a fucking hand i uh so the other funny hilarious thing was have you ever heard of oh there's there's another funny th- like they just made this thing called uber pet have you ever heard of that wait i heard about that starting in california isn't that where someone brings you a cat and you play with them for a while no well i delivered a cat to the fucking airport that's what i did it was like a Disney movie. I was expecting the cat to Did have the these. Did the cat give you a shitty review? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they need more diversity and felines in this podcast, you know? I want to hear more bitching about not enough catnip and morsels. So you pick up animals and bring them places. Yeah. So I've I never heard of that. Cat. I was expecting it to be like a Disney movie, like all, uh, the cat being all fucking bougie with like gold sunglasses <laughs> and shit. You pick up the whole cast from the Cats musical. Well, <laughs> I picture it being as much of a bitch as... Uh, Sally Fields and Homeward Bound when she played that sassy. It was, it was like oh my god, yeah, that's uh, that, yeah, I remember that. There was like the three, the two dogs and the cat, right? Yeah, I used you, to watch that one as a kid. That, that cat was it's the cuntiest actor. You know what it is? It's that fucking mom, Sally Fields. It's the mom in uh, Miss Doubtfire. Yeah, she is cunty. Wasn't yeah. she? Uh, no, I'm, 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 I was thinking she's not the same broad from Home Improvement. It's no, just, no. I just, I'm just confusing it because I thought she was a movie. She was in a movie with, with uh. Uh, Tim Allen. Mm-mm. No. But I think she came and went though, right? She came. Yeah, she maybe it was like yeah, one, two movies, and then she left. Yeah, I don't. I don't. She's she's a boomer, so she's in a lot of old movies. I think that didn't do well. But, anyways, um, so the next thing that happened is, have you ever heard of Uber Share? That's where you, if I remember, it's the one where like, you have multiple different people in the same car ride, and they. they it's cheaper for each one of them. Yeah. And the other thing is a lot of motherfuckers do Uber share because it fucks over the driver. It like it's cheaper. It's like two, three dollars cheaper. Because basically right. basically like say say there's like a ten mile say say you're going like two miles, they're gonna pick Uber share because they know there's not gonna be anybody in that two miles that you're gonna share this car with. Yeah. So so it's just like three dollars cheaper. Oh, for them. so they just uh, they So they just do Uber share but they don't share. Like nobody gotcha. nobody's gonna be on that route. So well, this should be like a hey. By the way, no one was in the car, so we're gonna take difference now from you. Yeah, anyway. yeah. So, so, so here's what fucking happened. I pick up this guy Juan. Stereotypical, like, I mean, not just just a short, really small Mexican guy. Yeah. He's like five feet tall. He's sitting on the passenger side in the back, right? Mm-hmm. And on the way, it says, "Oh, you got to pick up this guy on the way," and it says, "Like, you got to pick up Alan, dude." I'm I'm not even like trying to be funny. I felt bad for this guy. Which he, one? Alan. Okay. Because I get over there, he looks exactly like that grumpy black dude in the office. You know what that yeah, the, the horseshoe the, ring? Yeah, yeah. I forgot yeah. what his name is. I forgot his name too, but he's a the chubbier guy who's always like, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I know you're talking his about droop face. You know. Yeah. So fucking, and it took him ten minutes to get in the car because he's like 500 pounds. Oh, his 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 knees were like giving my fucking spine a massage, dude. So it takes him ten minutes. I'm not joking. It was ten minutes. Like like it was. I could see on the Uber app charging your uh, fucking rider extra because it was set, like so. When you pull up, mm-hmm. it, they get three minutes to get in the car, or they mm-hmm. charge them extra for you having to wait. So I was waiting because I needed to oil up this motherfucker's belly to squeeze him into the sardine around. can. Yeah. When you when you when he gets in the car, your car has a scale. It goes. 
Yeah. Based on that, it's what he's going to get charged. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, dude, and, and, and I was on the same side as him, so I was just picturing, like, what, what Juan's thinking. Like, I'm going to fucking make a sharp turn, and it's just going <laughs> to tilt, like in Twins, you know? Uh, so He's just up here. So what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> We're just balancing on two wheels. Your car looks like so, it has hydraulics and shit. <laughs> Ay, wey. Que tal? So oh, fucking, no. So, Ay, so, wey. So fucking... No, but he did go I way because what happened is Alan couldn't <laughs> he couldn't fit his belt on, and I'm looking in my rear view, and this is another reason why I felt bad for him. The black dude, the the fat dude, he fell asleep three times because he had sleep apnea. Oh well, yeah. So he fought, so like literally, I'm just driving, and, he's just, and it's just like, <laughs> like every bump I hit, you hear that. <laughs> and and I look in the rearview mirror and I look at Juan's face and he looks disgusted. He's like, "Why the? F- I'm I'm next to a fucking like horror movie monster, you know." <laughs> and then I'm looking at Juan, <clears throat> so I'm not paying attention. And I forgot like all the amount of speed bumps they have in the hood because they don't want kids <laughs> to get hit. So I flew over a fucking speed bump, <laughs> forty miles an hour, and fucking Alan couldn't fit the seatbelt on, so he just flies into the air, hits his head on the roof, and lands on Juan. <laughs> I wish I would have gotten that shit on fucking camera. I would have turned around and been like, you're Juan, right? And you must be in two and three. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, dude, that guy barely woke up when he landed on Juan. I was like, he's going to suffocate this He crushed that dude, man. So anyways, and then the last thing, I'm not, I didn't even tell you about this. Like three or four days ago, I'm not even joking. Like, like I sound like I'm exaggerating or making it up or judging too hard. I picked up a crackhead who just got out of jail. Oh, nice. She just got out of jail, and I'm picking her up from jail to drive to the police station in Inglewood to get her car out of the fucking pound. And, dude, I I literally, like, it was the the day before I got one of those, like, internal cameras for Mm -hmm. the car. She was going crackhead in my car punching my fucking passenger seats Why? screaming because she's like she's like yo i need my motherfucking car and you ain't take and i didn't do this shit i just got out of jail and they're holding the car because she fucking rigged the car with crack rock although she she snuck that shit in like heavyweights with the candy oh my god okay. so so so, the, so they can't release the car out of the pound because they're still fucking like it's still under investigation she's like no you don't know and like there was there was so many contradictions. She's like, you don't understand. That's a brand new car. I saved all my money, and 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 that's my mother's car from the 1960s. I'm like, bitch. There's no way you got a brand new car from the 1960s. Okay, what? Do you, keep your story straight at least. <laughs> what you know. Year are you in? So, and then and then like after p- crying her fucking eyes out and punching my fucking seat, she finally like she tries to small talk with me, and I'm like. <laughs> I have. So, anyways, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have. I have nothing to add to this conversation. Like, there's nothing I can relate to this stupid fucking story. And she's just like, you know, cops is fucking horrible. You know, you know, he sexually harassed me. How'd you feel about that? And I'm just, I didn't know what to say. I'm just like, um, how, uh, what, what, what happened? What, what did they do? She goes, they fucking asked me what my favorite food is. I'm oh, like, well, uh, I guess I sexually harassed every member of my family then. If it's oh my that God. sexual harassment, you know. So that's fucked up. You should have stopped the car and be like, "You ever heard of the boy who cried wolf?" <laughs> Dude, I was ready to fucking toss her on the side of the highway. I was. I, that's crazy. It, it's a fucking crack. She's like, she's screaming like, "I, you know, I'm gonna look up on Wikipedia who invented tow towing companies, and I'm gonna kill his ass." I'm like. Yeah, that's not the best thing to say the day you get out sure of jail. He said. <laughs> so, I don't even know how. Oh, okay, all right. So, that's other than that. I had um, I did my uh, polished six minutes at Lincoln Lodge. Uh, it went pretty well. I was think I was telling you about it. It was kind of you know wokeified because I don't I don't like using that word, but it's like I got edgy fucking it's filtered here. Yeah, here's here's the thing that I always want to tell people and that. I want to make clear is that I I don't have any pride. I'm not like political at all. So when somebody tells me, hey, man, I think that's a little offensive. You should change that up. I don't mind changing it up because, yeah, I do believe in freedom of speech. But at the end of the day, if the equation ends with shit tons of laughs, 
then it's good. I don't I don't have to right. fucking, you know. Well, you, know? you can take something and be like it it doesn't seem like it's working cuz no one likes it. Yeah. And you can take someone like, "Well, that person doesn't like him like it, so fuck that person." Mhm. Because I'm not going to sit here and uh And you know, and the, there were some bits that I did at like one of my favorite fucking rooms in Chicago is Red Room now because you could say whatever the fuck you want and I did Where is the, it? It's like a if you're going on the 94 towards chicago mm -hmm. it's literally the exit before chicago um in skokie oh okay i think i think it says like the holocaust museum off it's of like alpha dempster or some shit i think so yeah you just you just go towards chicago down that exit okay and it's literally it's right there i did it over there it looks it looks just it's First of all, it's fucking eye candy because they set up the bar. Per they got an awesome sound system. They got a huge neon sign like this, so it looks fucking professional. Legit, yeah. And um, what I did the bit that I did there in cl in my comedy writing group, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Dude, there's there's nothing funny about this." I think I mentioned about this, like they, yeah, because that's what happened. Is uh, so I I think I mentioned on the last podcast basically. The teacher that I have is the f he's he's one of the goats of Chicago. He's gonna be famous. We're I think we're gonna have him on in like February or March. I was talking to him. Um, he uh, he got really upset because I said retard in class, mm. and uh, I was like, and that's when I thought I was like, you know, I could use something else other than retard. I'm not gonna be that's my freedom. That's my sp well, like I'm not gonna go on a fucking you know alt right rant. It's like okay, you got a point. It could have funnier laughs doing you know a different word so yeah. but uh it was just i'm still laughing because the the substitute like the thing that here's what made me laugh the most i don't have any problem with her i don't have any problem with fem feminists but what made me laugh the most is when she walked in the first thing she said she's like all right i want everyone to know i'm a feminist i'm a mega feminist and i'm like dude i hope one day i get to be a successful enough comedian to start a class like that mm -hmm. And then, and then, like immediate, immediately after, that was my computer. Oh. Immediately after, she goes, uh, she's like, and by the way, I'm a carpenter. I'm like, <laughs> okay. So, all right. It's the only word, we, only word you're willing to work with. Huh? I'm, a, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna. I can't wait to start a class. Like, I'm a libertarian, and I work the cashier at Jewel. You know, like. <laughs> oh my God. So it was. It's a good way to start the conversation because you're telling me right now, right off the bat, that you're a humorless cunt. <laughs> yeah, like. Well, this is going to be funny, isn't it? <laughs> you guys, feminist carpenters, you guys got the best sense of humor. But but no, here's, listen, I'm not going to shit on her. It's like starting but, a date and saying, just to let you know, we're not going to fuck. And it's like, okay. But, but, the, but, but the, thing, <laughs> the thing that made me laugh my fucking ass off the most was like, immediately when I first, I was like, who the fuck is this? Who thought this was going to ever as a substitute? And I, and I looked it up because I was like, I wonder if she's like a union carpenter, you know? Dude. I'm not even joking. She's like in a Wicker Park, all woman, carpenter, like independent business. <laughs> it's okay. Just, it's just this photo of these broads holding tools, like fucking Wendy holding the bat in The Shining. Um, I'm sure it's they're like, all like Jenny. You're holding the fucking hammer upside down. Do it at least right for the fucking photo. Oh my <laughs> like, God. The uh, they're all dressed like John Goodman and Roseanne. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all look like John Goodman too. I but bet. Anyways, um, so other than that, oh, other than that, I've been doing keto, dude, and it is a bitch. It is a bitch. It's hard to I've get been, the right, the, uh, correct amount of fat, dude. My shits look like the commercials for like Dairy Queen, those Frosties. <laughs> like, yeah, it's literally a perfect fucking like clay, clay-like spiral. And then the other thing, like, here's the thing with keto. I, I almost want to write a bit about like keto is like. You get to eat whatever the fuck you want except the best part. It's like, oh, yeah, you can eat pizza, but you can't have the crust. You can't have the – like, it, it, it'd be like if our it, – it'd be like if our – one of our – It's not complete. That's what it is. It's yeah. not complete. Oh, you can you can have – you know, you can have fucking whatever, a sandwich. You just can't have the bread. It's like it's like if, if, if like, like your girl or my wife was mm -hmm. like, listen, you can fuck anybody you want. I'm, I'm fine with a polyamorous marriage. Oh, okay. And you leave out the door, but you can't come. You know, yeah. like <laughs> that's like the because the, they had a we tried it for a while, and they had the actually I didn't try it was it was like a low carb type of thing, 
and uh, someone suggested to me cauliflower rice, and I like cauliflower. Yeah, well, but the rice so, is shit, right? Yeah, but but passing it off as my fucking rice course, my rice course of the meal, I was just like, no, this is bullshit. It, it, it is <laughs> it absolute bullshit. It fucking sucks. But I'll have cauliflower like in like in soup and stuff, and I'll, I'll even just fucking eat it in a salad or whatever, cold. But when you try to like make it look like rice and have, pass it off as the rice, it just leaves something uh, missing. Bro, so so you know what? One of my favorite, like, because the first time I did keto, honestly, all I fucking ate was avocados and eggs, which is the first mistake because you get get sick of that shit fast. Uh, but, yeah. But what but what I had recently, dude, I never had Brussels sprouts before. And yeah. they kind of do taste like shit. But you know what I fucking had them with? Hot chorizo. And that shit oh. was aw- That was so good. That, you know, for me, Brussels sprouts, if I have them, they have to be roasted. Like, you know, like a little char on them and stuff. Oh. Then then they take, they're take. they fine. I just boiled them. Yeah, exactly. But that's how it gets boring because you're just sitting there eating boiled fucking Brussels sprouts. Just like, what, yeah. what happened to my life? Well, it's like, <laughs> well, you know what's funny is, you know, Mike... Which one? Although, Meathead Mike, uh, yeah, yeah. you know? He told me, he's like, you just got to pick your favorite sauce and eat it with it. And the funny thing, like, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna talk <laughs> shit, Mike. The funny thing about Mike, he told me, he kept telling me, he's like, dude, what you got to do is you got to eat vegetables with every fucking meal. And I kept thinking, I'm like, he's he does have a point. It's yeah, true. Yeah. You got to have vegetables. Fiber and everything, yeah. But that's what I realized. It's because he's got horrible fiber. Because <laughs> 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 he, he was telling me like a few months ago how he's got to take psyllium fiber all the fucking time. You got to have yourself a glass of uh, Metamucil every morning. That's yeah, what you got to do. Yeah, no, he was. Yeah, he literally <laughs> said that. Because so I'm just picturing his asshole doing the Owen Wilson, just like pulsating. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> but wow. <laughs> But uh, anyways, should we get to the the deep stuff, the 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 tough? Sure. Um. So, we're here to talk about death, cause uh, I had like five deaths in three years. I'll get to that in the end because I know I'm gonna fucking ramble for a long time. You had your dad, which affected you pretty yeah. badly. Yeah. I mean, what is? I I would say my dad is the first. Like you know, you have your inner circle. Yeah. And then my dad was the first in my inner cir- circle to go. Uh, I've lost uncles over, you know, that are in Cuba and things like that. Um, but yeah, when my dad. So for the listeners, you're Cuban, and were, you were born in Chicago. Yeah, I was born in Chicago. I was born in a hospital that no longer exists. Um, but my pops You're burned was burned to the ground after you got born, right? <laughs> they, they, uh. You wait, wait, wait no, sun- you know what actually happened you to it? It went Santeria bankrupt. With you. <laughs> it went bankrupt. <laughs> and I really <laughs> joke about it because my my dad my dad never paid my fucking my the bills for my fucking birth <laughs> so it was a whole joke about it like it went bankrupt because dad never paid for your fucking bills yeah it's my dad if he didn't have to pay for a bill he wouldn't <laughs> you're that fucking last straw i broke the camels i brought uh saint <laughs> judas's hospital to the fucking yeah. but uh but yeah my 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 mom and dad they they uh they met here and when they came from cuba in 1980 and my pop's was the kind of dude who just I'm guessing they were first in Florida. That's where all Cubans that's the first stop, right? No, uh well yes and no. So my, my mother I'm, was actually I'm, recently telling me. I'm going off of the historical facts that I've learned from Scarface. Scarface, yeah. yeah. No, so the, my dad went to Florida and came here. My mother actually went to to I think she said she actually went to Peru and then came here. Oh wow. It's a weird fucking thing. I'll get the facts right with her, but she was talking to me recently about it, like maybe a few months ago and I was drunk when she was telling me about it. She was a Coke mule. It was that Peruvian meal. shit, and the, well, the, the one the one part of that movie that's, that's legit is that she did come here and they have to sleep on the ground in a fucking field for for a while until they actually send them to one of the sanctuary states that in Chicago. Illinois. No, it where wherever the camp was that they held them in uh in in Peru. Oh wow wow! So they were out there for a while. Yeah. Before they actually start distributing them to different sanctuary states. Yeah. So they sent them here to Illinois, and um. My father, my my mom, she uh she knew a guy who had his same name and last name, in Cuba that she dated, and they and she heard his name. She goes, oh, he's here, and she was like, oh, he was a he was a good looking guy. All the girls were after him. He was just you know like handsome, whatever. And then later on, when the lady that she met here goes, oh, he's right here. She goes, this little motherfucker, because <laughs> she was expecting some six foot fucking macho man, and and my my dad just like me, his his humor is what fucking landed him. Whoever he was with, you know. Yeah. But um, to yeah you know, to get to the you know to not ramble on it, 
my my dad didn't take care of himself. He just didn't. He you know he he was the kind of guy who was just like I'm just gonna live my damn life, and uh, I would rather I would rather live my life uh, happy and unhealthy than to uh, you know address things that have he's had for years. <laughs> like hey, that's a fucking thing that you should address. I'll check it up maybe 14, 15 years down the line or something. Like what? What do you have? Like a a tumor? No. He, well, he had a lot of fucking problems with like. Uh, cardiac he he had a lot of problems with a lot of little things you know like he didn't address he was he's overweight for most of his life like diabetes or something he didn't have diabetes he quite didn't get quite there but he always had like fucking pains and aches and stuff and we're talking about like in his 20s and 30s and moving on and um and he just he was not a guy who went to the hospital he's just like nah fucking go do that or to the doctor rather he's not gonna fucking do that it's that old boomer thought like avoid the doctor you know yeah but it's not even boomer it's fucking that's because of this dumbass country. Because they don't prioritize health. They I- don't, and 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 a lot of times, here I'll be with you. My dad got as sick as he did for two reasons, because he was in prison, and the prison system didn't give a fuck. And second, he came out. He got misdiagnosed twice. For what? He so he was in prison. He started developing a bad cough, and I'm talking about this was over like this lasted a, a year and a half, two years. Yeah. In prison, they didn't do any fucking type of... It, they did the bare minimum. He's got the human kennel cough. Yeah. They, like He's got pneumonia. That's what they said in the prison. He's got pneumonia. He's fine. Yeah. But they didn't do any... They didn't address anything. Pneumonia doesn't last a year and a half, two years. Yeah. So, you know, my dad knew something was going on. But when he came out, made nothing of it. He had this fucking cough that kept going and kept getting progressively worse. So we took him to the hospital... And the, the what, uh, what year was this? He came out of prison in 2014. Okay. So he he uh he basically um we we took him to the hospital, and this fucking asshole doctor he just goes uh well the good thing is it's not cancer. And my dad is like all right cool, so he left, and he he proceeded the next few months to have this fucking cough, and they gave him like just just take over the counter shit. They didn't do any more tests because my dad didn't have insurance because he just came out of prison. Yeah. Then they, he came back. It's not going away. Like, yeah, well, let's give you some uh, some steroids to take, like, the spray and shit for, like... Yeah. Again, this whole thing's spreading the whole time. So, um, finally, when my dad started getting Medicaid, he approved for Medicaid, well, now we're going to start fucking doing the actual tests, and by that point, he's stage four cancer. Oh, fuck. So, it was a thing that they, was, like... Was it lung cancer? It was lung cancer. Did he smoke cigarettes? He was not a smoker. Oh wow! He was not. He was a. Uh, I mean, my dad. My dad when he was. He was always in bars. People were smoking there and shit. But I, I don't really fucking believe it. That's how you get that aggressive. Um, but my dad did have a serious lung infection when he was a kid in Cuba that they never addressed too. Yeah. It just did some like permanent damage to his lung. Um, but so, dude, the whole thing was like it was just caught off guard because here we are. Our pops came out. We lost him for seven years in pr- to the prison system. And so I want to so I want to ask before we like move along like so so you were telling me before about like that wad of cash that, like your uncle tried to or his friend tried to like what got him in prison if you want to so, share that no I will um so basically he, my dad was a a drug dealer you know my dad came here he probably had that little Scarface fantasy too but he came here and he at first he started getting jobs but then I mean that's exactly what they were they were jobs you know. They or just gonna, odd jobs. Yeah, he worked at a he managed a a little fucking shop in a warehouse. And my dad was never he never in his mind was gonna be content with mediocrity. It was he just wasn't. And um and there was times where, you know, he fucking got involved with, with people he knew from Cuba and stuff and all of them came here with that same mentality. That's why that Scarface movie is actually based on on a reality of 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 the circumstances when people came from here from Cuba and from Peru and shit, they yeah. the Spanish realized that there was a market in in something other than going to a shit job and probably making three or four dollars an hour, which is what the minimum wage was. Yeah, and so there were times when I was a kid growing up. I remember my, my dad had a drawer in the kitchen. He opened it up. There was fucking hundred dollar bills stacked all the way to the back in the front. And my dad was always the kind of guy he wanted to make sure we had everything. So it's like. Here's that, but he also helped his friends that didn't give a shit about him a lot, and that's why he lost a lot of it. So he had a few uh, businesses and things that he he uh, he had a few bars, he had a few restaurants over the years that he he let 
that he basically lost because he was too giving to people who didn't give a shit about him. Now, when my dad actually went, he left to Florida um, in like 2004 or five. Yeah. And the idea was that he was going to get together with these guys out there because you're getting older and uh, you kind of lose contact with some of the people in the game. And he, he actually met a dude who uh, who allowed him to work with him as an apprentice plumber. So he had kind of got to this point where he's like, hey, I'm getting too old for this shit and I, yeah, I, I can't like live my go, life. Try and go legit. Yeah. And he, he but got, what happened? Like, how did your ma feel about him like leaving? Were they splitting up or? Yeah, we were splitting up. My, my dad, my mom, my mom and dad split up when I was five. Oh, okay. So they they still got along. They still got along just fine. What, what, what's that? So that'd probably be like what ninety three or something. The they split up in nineteen ninety four. Mm. Yeah. So the uh, the. Uh, but you just he, he was just a good dad and stayed in the relationship. Yeah, he he was around. He made his cameos, you know. And your the, ma and your mom was like uh, what's called like uh. Like chill, like chill about it. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Like uh, I the know, first the, fuck, well, the word I'm two for. years, they were they were they were civil. Yeah, they were yeah, they yeah, were they were cordial. For. You know, it's uh, the first two years after he left, no, because um, the reality was my my the reason they split is because my dad was fucking around with somebody else for a couple of years, which she was she's the reason my fucking family fell apart. She's a cunt until this day. I heard she's sick. Hope she fucking dies. She's a bitch. The broad he messed around with yeah. yeah so when 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 my mom found out and i'm not going to justify her either because she assumed it but she was also with somebody else so um they just they they were just they just slept in the same bed at night and that's it they didn't really talk much and you know i was like four or five years old something like that yeah and it, you know me and my sister even as kids like we kind of like notice like there's you know, dad's never here he's always drunk and when he does come home he's always bitching about something yeah so she left with her and um, she, my, if my dad wasn't as infatuated with her as he was, we probably could have had a uh, a different, a little bit more of him present. But she was a type of person that was demanding on what she needs to offer her for her to even be in the picture. So he went away with her, and um, and he gave her everything, like bought her a brand new car and this and that, and gave her everything. And what she would do is she would stick around for about a year while he did that, and then she would take everything and leave, just overnight. Yeah. She did to him that one time, and that's when I got back in contact with my dad. At this point, I was like seven years old. Yeah. So I had gone two years where all I knew about him was on the phone. So he started to come around, and during that time is when my mom and him actually said, like, you know, let's we got kids to raise, so let's let all that ship go. And she came back around another three four fucking times over the years and did the same shit got everything she needed out and in, in a lot of those occasions my mom even like got along with her like you know hey listen you know whatever my kid's gonna be there a few days a week so just, i just want to let you know that you can talk to me if you need something if he's not being respectful or whatever yeah which i was i was i didn't become disrespectful until i was like about 11 or 12 years old the rest of the time i was just a kid running around fucking getting in trouble and doing shit yeah but, um, yeah, so the reason I bring her into it is because she resonated over him over the years. And, and every time he would try to get his shit right, like, she would pop back in. And she was just, like, the fucking warm tongue that tried to get him. So well, if you're going to be with... Huh? A bad influence. She was just a cunt, yeah. She just wanted she wanted a the, certain standard of living that she didn't deserve. And when my dad was actually doing all this stuff, uh, plumbing, and, and he's leaving that whole life behind. At this point, he had lost contact with her for years. Well, what happens is she comes back around, and she basically says, hey, you know, um, let's give it another shot. And, uh, and she says, you know, I got these people I know, and what they do is, you know, they do big deals. We're not talking about small time. This is big, big deals. He goes, all right. So he got in contact with those people. And then two of his other friends got in, in there, too. How he, big? Show us with your hands for the listeners. I don't know what to do with my hands. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so, you know, he ended up 
and I remember because I heard we heard the recordings. We heard the recordings they had of my father, the police recordings, and oh, shit. my dad was not a violent guy. Yeah. So he, his other friend, who was a real piece of shit, and I fucking that guy's a cocksucker because he got off easy and he's fucking fine. But he, uh, he, uh, you hear my dad saying like, "Hey, you know, uh, hey, listen, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this." But I don't want to. I don't want any guns. I don't want any of that shit. Like I don't want to get involved in that. Yeah. They were gonna do a deal that was going to be like a couple hundred thousand. And and it was it was uh it was uh, a sting thing it was a uh, it was cops it was feds it was gonna be a raid it was gonna, yeah so they <clears throat> get to this location they have a bunch of pot they have a fuck ton of money and guns it was so, just weed uh it was just weed yes oh wow but but the real the the <clears throat> the way they hit him was with the the fact that he had a gun in the car oh wow. So he, um, and his friend, the reason I said his friend was a piece of shit is because his friend basically outed him on everything, just to try to get time off. Yeah. And he ended up getting time off, and then he got away, but then he did something else, and he ended up right back in there for fucking 12 years. Because he's a cocksucker. He's a fucking deceitful bitch. So, whatever. He went in there, and, um, and that's essentially those, like, it was seven and a half years of him being in fucking prison and it, it really him being in prison do you guys over, ever visit him there i saw him one time before his court date me and my sister uh got to listen to uh to the recording the cops yeah. had on him and we're talking about lawyers and dude we couldn't afford a fucking lawyer yeah so he was like right he was he had a public defender and the public defender doesn't give a shit they so work they, for the so, state so when you said like he had like a shelf full of cash did they raid all that shit they took everything from him they searched your house, right? Well, it wasn't my house. It was his. Oh, yeah, yeah. But <clears throat> they took everything he had. And it's, you know, evidence, right? Yeah. It's not evidence. It's somebody bought a fucking brand new yacht yeah. or some shit or whatever. Cocksuckers. But, uh, yeah, they, uh, he went in and, uh, and basically he got out, like, you know, we're, we were sitting there thinking, like, yeah, we got him back now. He's a reformed guy. He's talking about leaving that shit behind and that he regrets all the years he's lost and all that stuff. And he gets fucking, and he's sick. Yeah. So when he got out, we had him nine months before he died. And it was just like a fucking punch in the gut. But it was good to have that moment because I resented my dad for years. Yeah. I resented him for, I resented him because I felt like he picked this fucking broad over his family. Yeah. And and I resented him because the, right before he went to prison, literally a year prior. Yeah. I gave it a one last hurrah. I said, you know what? I'm going to go meet up with my dad. We're going to go fishing. I'm going to try to make sense of this because this dude is popping all over the state following this cunt. And uh, and I know I know the you times. You grab him by the head and go, I knew it was you, Fredo. I gave, <laughs> when you go fishing. Yeah. yeah. I knew uh, to give him the, uh, the fucking goodwill hunting. Like, it's okay. It's not your fault. It's yeah. not your fault. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I... I, uh, I I, I'm glad I got those nine months because when he uh, when he realized when he realized that you know he's sick to that point. Yeah. But my dad joked about it the entire fucking time. He didn't. At no point did he get melancholy or anything about it. He was just saying, like, he's like, yeah, it's about right. You know, I, I fucking abused myself for years and I I didn't take care of myself and and he goes and I you know I haven't really necessarily been very intelligent about the moves I made, so. I'm glad well, he didn't go melancholy. Tonight, tonight, tonight. <laughs> well, he didn't even lose his hair like this guy did for chemo. Yeah. So. But uh, but yeah, man, it was just a, uh, you know, when when he finally was out, he saw that I I made sure that every move I made was to, was to be to be with my kid. Yeah. Like if I had to work a light night shift, I work night shift because I can be home in the day. If I had to work two different jobs and I had to make sure my only two days off are with my kid, I, I'm gonna do it. And he got to tell me that when when before he goes, he goes. If I would have dedicated even a third of the time you dedicate to your kid to you, I think you could I could have made something big out of you. And it was just like that was the only moment that really fucking hurt me. Cause I was like, you know what? Yes and no. But I think that the fact that you were absent, the fact that that the fact that you know I didn't have you as much, maybe that's why I have to be the dad I am. Yeah. It could have made me that way. But yeah, it's you know, it was a crazy thing, cause it was so fucking fast, dude. And yeah. that's the only one, that's the only death in the family that, like, really, it stuck with me. And I, I dude, yeah. I went through a little fucking depression for a while. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm I, we're fucking. You know what? I love this podcast because we're being vulnerable men. So, mm-hmm. and that's yeah. that's the fucking people we need in this new generation. Yeah. But, but you know, like I was saying, like, dude, I remember what like I know what I know that it affected you, and 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 I know when people say like grief and death, it goes in fucking cycles, mm-hmm. and I can fucking tell, dude. Like, yeah. I, like I started hanging out with you around like 2009, maybe, and I remember that last time that I hung out with you when you were in that Addison house, and we were there with you, you had some friend over, and you were just pounding down beers, and I was like, I never seen you drink like that, and I was like, I just felt like you're going through something that is either going to destroy you or I need oh. to give space for you to go through, and then like I'll see you on the other side. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because but when was that? Was that, was that, was, it was like perhaps after my dad passed, right? Yeah. 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 yeah I, no, I, I mean, I don't, the thing is, I never even knew that it was because your dad passed because I don't think you ever told me. That's why. No, I, no, I kept, I kept to myself, that's, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that, that's why, like, I just assumed, to be honest, like fucking degenerates like David Dunn. Mm. I thought it was just like, you know, you're just going through shit because, you know, every, every fucking friend circle mm. has that shit where you party hard as fuck. And then that whole scene fades away, and the people who did nothing but party, they're they're mentally destroyed because yes. they want that party to keep going. Right. And everybody else is like, I'm starting a family. I'm starting to get. I could still party, yeah. but I'm going to be a productive person. Right. And so I was like, you're gonna you're gonna reach that fork, but there's yeah. nothing that I'm gonna like. I didn't want to be there to watch it happen because I saw what happened to other fucking people. You know. Yeah. I dude. I uh, honestly the. Uh you say that, and and the re- and and honestly, that's I've just seen it over and over again, and that is one person that you just mentioned that, like, is is probably going through what they're going through because they they felt they were the heart of the party at the time. Yeah. And the party left. Yeah. It's like, hey, how about the other part that you needed to address, like your life around it? Yeah. In the meantime, so and then. And that's why, and that's why, that's why I think he kind of fucking hated me and resented me. Because when I had my kid, I'm like, I guess it needs to be all about yeah. me making sure I have a fucking future for this kid. Yeah, yeah. Making sure that I build something. So when I would be working late nights and shit, and hey, come on, where are you at? You know, I'm like, dude, I work till 10:30, and then fucking 11 o'clock, I'll be there. But sometimes I just didn't have the fucking energy. Yeah. You know, it's just like, dude, I, I just dude, don't have it. It's fucking crazy how like that pendulum swings with our fucking boomer generation parents because it's like we saw all the fucking mistakes being done yeah. and we're going to do the fucking opposite, you know? Try to. Maybe we'll yeah. make your own you make you, your own series of fucking how do, mistakes. How, how do you feel now? I'm just curious just for like listeners and shit as far as like dealing with your dad, you know, obviously when it happened and over the years it mm-hmm. went probably from level 7 to 10 back and forth. How do you how do you think you feel now about it? So like it, it of, was a so, so here's 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 how how I'll describe it. I right after it happened, it took it took a while for it to hit me, and not a very long while. It took like a month, and it, it was just like it was the initial like, damn it, you know, he's gone, and I had to get in there and make a decision. Yeah. To basically to take him off. Yeah. And I kind of felt almost like a guilt, like you know, oh, I, dude, I, guilt I, always comes to everybody. Yeah. And I, I did, I felt shit, but not only the guilt there, I felt a guilt for having spent seven years while he's in prison, resenting him and refusing to really talk to him much. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I, I would, I would hate, maybe that was the, the chance he needed to fucking get right with us or get right with me at least. Cause he was always cool with my sister, but the initial, the initial fucking pain. Cause my dad died in July summer out still nice out and if you've ever been through like a fucking depression you can't find the joy in anything yeah you can't you just you know you've like you're just in a state of fucking nothing a zero and um so the the pain came later on with little things like going through my phone and seeing his name on there it's like yeah shit i used to call here every once in a while yeah or like holidays coming up and it's just like fuck Damn, like, yeah, I, the type of stuff we're joking about right now, this is exactly what we would fucking joke about. Yeah. And I, like, it's almost like, I would love to hear what he has to say in this moment. You know what I mean? Because you yeah, have, like, yeah. that, that type of thing. 
the pain. You said you got your sense of humor from him. So. Yeah, but dude, my dad was the life of the fucking party, and my dad is essentially my da- my dad's uh, how should I say it? The way my dad reacts to things or reacted to things, I should say, is exactly what I took up. My mother's the more emotional one. Yeah. My dad was the kind who would take any situation and just be like, that's fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. You know, like, he'll make fun of it. Yeah. I mean, he had his, like, respect for things, but he's like, ah, get the fuck out of here. You know, like, he, yeah. he was very more, more dismissive and, like, let it be and fucking live your damn life and, and laugh about everything as much as you can. Like, my sister was, she went through her, like, little religious phase and stuff, too. My dad and my uncle are actually Christians, that They were like this. They were, like, fucking, they couldn't take anything serious. They were always fucking joking about shit. When my sister got married, my dad came there fucking hammered. And all he was doing was making fun of everything. He was pointing at Jesus on the cross. And he goes, hey, look, who's this guy right here? Yeah. And like shit like that. My sister was getting fucking pissed. Like, stop. And people here, there's, everybody's here getting, is getting their, their uh, oh, it wasn't a marriage. It was a, uh, it was for the, uh, she got her fucking communion or something, whatever. I just, I just went to a wedding like that where it was like this family was rich as fuck, but this family's like poor as fuck. And I was just laughing my ass because all the, the the poor family. There's like twenty fucking guys with ankle socks and three piece suits. It just <laughs> it looks so ridiculous. Like, it was so the uh, you know you know in the Catholic church they go around they throw the holy water like this. Yeah, <laughs> my fucking dad was back there, and you can hear them fucking him and my uncle just laughing the whole time. Yeah, and everybody's like, <sighs> stop. But because my dad came in there kind of hammered. He was he was watching this guy throw the holy water. He goes, I swear to God, this motherfucker comes up here and fucks up my five hundred dollar suit. I'm about to jump over this fucking pew, and then my uncle's laughing, and then he goes, Well, I'm kind of fucking drunk. Maybe a little bit hits me on the face, so I can wake up. So he's just <laughs> sitting there fucking joking about it the whole time, and I'm sitting in the front laughing because I'm just a fucking I'm a little kid, man. I'm like thirteen, but I'm finding this shit hilarious. Dude, I was, I was laughing at that wedding. I don't I don't mean, but I was laughing because the I I never fucking heard this before, but like mm-hmm. this priest was like in his thirties, like our age. Yeah. And he was like trying to be sarcastic and he's talking about like, you know, we are here to celebrate this act of matrimony between one uh, loving woman and a loving man. And, you know, in these days, people are people are they don't even respect marriage. They they get married jumping out of an airplane and skydiving. Why don't we do that? Huh? He was like being sarcastic. And I'm like, yeah. I, I don't remember that. That's, 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 that's probably gonna be my favorite uh, verse from the Bible now jumping out of a fucking airplane. Okay, there know? you go. So, but they told death do us part and, yeah. it, and then he fucking filled her parachute bag with silverware <laughs> like that shit that shit cartoon that shit got me laughing because i'm just picturing a bride and a groom jumping out of an airplane i forgot the parachute <laughs> but i do i do <laughs> they're already arguing midair you always forget everything <laughs> <laughs> oh that's uh yeah that's no, just how it was man like it was that, that so, humor so, came from there so but to like to to get to the to answer the question like how do you feel like oh now? yeah no just like dude, out of, I, like out of 10 i'm fine I, I mean i'm a 10 i'm back at it i'm oh, 10 10 being the worst or 10 being the worst yeah oh i'm like a one you're okay so i'll i'll reminisce but i i i i almost have like this uh this gratitude to have had some of those moments at the end yeah but i also like it's just life man it's just you, you, they're gone you know some deaths you, and I, I would imagine that some deaths you're like, your parents, you expect them to go before you. Yeah. Whereas if it was like a child or something, it might fuck you up for life. Yeah. But but it's, uh, you know, it progressively gets better. And it, and it, it just becomes a thing that like maybe you might talk about it enough you and know- it'll start to like kind of feel something. But it, it doesn't, it doesn't resonate with you. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it no longer takes a a toll on your on your entire day and your life it just sucks you know you know what fucking drives me nuts like i I am going to talk about my deaths soon Mm -hmm. but the thing that drives me the like what i learned from death is like makes me think about all the stupid petty little bullshit like soap opera drama Mm -hmm. that families have and it's like bitch you could fucking die tomorrow and you're gonna yeah. be and you're gonna be fucking dramatic over you know like I was talking about the last podcast over toys how my aunt was you know yeah like bitch you're gonna be fucking dead tomorrow mm-hmm. and yeah and this is how you're gonna go to your grave over some toy drama yeah you know like right now I mean I'm not gonna I, and not just that but that's how you'll be remembered yeah you know like that's it's what like, are you yeah. gonna say? What are you gonna say at the funeral? Oh well, she was a cunt the last few years, but yeah. let's talk about the good times, huh? Oh yeah, there weren't any good times, you know. <laughs> I got three stories, three. So, I don't know. Do you want me to move on to no, my shit? 
Yeah, go ahead. I, d- I didn't know if. Like, yeah, no, that's 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 about it, man. And it's funny because we're, we're on the we're on the subject of death. The, the some one of the things that um uh, that uh I'm not sure if I've told you or if you, you probably have noticed over the years. Um, my middle school graduating class, I can go to my yearbook, and cross out, like twenty fucking names. Yeah, people, people that are my age or younger, that are gone over stupid shit. Mm-hmm. But we just had a a a dude of. Uh, that used to go to school with us. He just died uh, two weeks ago. He OD'd in his car. And I think he was on all kinds of shit. But he OD'd in his car. And what it did was it made me think uh, for a minute. Because I'm like, you know, I, I literally, I could have taken that path with these guys. With either the people I've lost through like game banging bullshit. Yeah. Which I resented. I hate so fucking, so molecular level. But then, there are things like like substance abuse that I'm not immune from. I can go on a drink binge. Yeah. I can do all that shit. But it's uh it, it hits fucking I was just thinking it hits close to home because these are people that I know and I grew up with and it's almost like <clears throat> the entire neighborhood in that and what it breeded in that neighborhood. It wasn't it wasn't conducive to like going out and doing something bigger or nothing. It was just like uh, almost like apathetic. Yeah. That you're living in this shit fucking place. And that this is the as as good as it's gonna get, and this is one of the reasons why I had uh, reached out and talked to Dave and stuff. And it's like, as much as we've had our fucking back and forth, dude, I don't I don't want to see you. I don't want to see Carrick again. Yeah. I don't want to hear about that. Yeah. If there was, if if all I could have. Which t- Carrick is one of your friends that owed for anybody listening. Yeah, yeah. He he is he, he killed himself. He, is he the one? Is he the one you're saying he OD'd in a car? No, no, Carrick. Uh, Carrick. Oh, killed, this is another one. Carrick killed himself. Yeah, this one was just two weeks ago. What, did you ever get detail? Like, what happened to Carrick? Man, I, I, the only person we can get details from, it would require digging into that is his father, and it would, re- or his brother, and it would require probably opening that wound for them again. Yeah. So what I left it as, I, I just understood as a general, like he was, he was going through some shit, but he, uh, yeah, he killed himself and left a note and everything. And, um, and when I heard that, literally, that's why I made a Facebook. I'm like, dude. I realize there's people that I fucking lost contact with over the years that I'm not going to fucking sit here and pretend like, well, all they needed was me in their life. Like, no. You know what some people need sometimes is is for you to, like, maybe hear their situation and just be like, you know, fucking joke with them, riff with them, bullshit with them. You know, at least, you know, to be that other... Because people will post some shit that are, is critical sometimes online, and, and most people will look past it and be like... Ugh, being dramatic again. Well, some people are not being dramatic. Some people actually need fucking help, and um, that's that's the thing though too. Like as far as my personal philosophy, like some people just can't be helped because they don't want the help, and there and ain't that shit that, that there ain't shit that you can do about it. Because I heard this one quote that I I fucking love because it really, I don't know how to put it, but it like it, it's not just you you know it's it's kind of like a politics driven quote. But it but it fucking appeals to to it works with everything in life is that most people you could get the biggest fucking Wolf of Wall Street Leonardo DiCaprio salesman and the only way you can shift someone's belief mm. is if they're at fifty percent. So right. so say politics, mm. if someone's a fucking say they're a centrist mm-hmm. and they're whatever, they're they're fifty percent Republican, fifty percent Democrat. <laughs> The only way you're gonna fucking shift them is if they're at fifty percent. So if you right. got, if you got, not, they haven't become extreme in any way. Yeah, that's why I was saying, like, with the person that we know, David, mm-hmm. you know, he's fucking, he's probably at like ten percent. You know, what I'm saying he's probably. like he's he's down in the dumps. So we could go over there, and we could throw a fucking party for him. We could get we could get him laid, and that's only gonna shift that fucking needle maybe ten percent higher. Right, because he's he's so it, he's, the pendulum he, is so far one he, way he, that it, I don't know I don't know what he's got to do, but he's got to. Whatever the fuck it'll take to him, whether it's Joe Rogan, David Goggins, or J- Jordan Peterson, I mean, he's got to want to get out of that might, rut. It, it might, yeah, exactly, and it, and it, and it, a lot of it has to do. He has, he's got to. I feel like the reason he's there is because we were talking about last time his ego, but also it's like he gets into this apathetic state and. And he's completely he's complacent with being there, yeah. Because he doesn't actually have like if you sit around, we're not working, not doing anything all the time. Yeah. If if he if he didn't have the, his 
a place where his father's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Just yeah. sit there and eat steaks all day. Yeah. Well, then there's not anything that's going to light a fire up under his ass to make sure that he gets out there and does anything. Yeah. And I and I went there offering him a, a, a gig with one of the guys I knew that I used to work with. I'm like, dude, I can get you a gig. It's not a whole lot. It's like 17, 18 bucks, but it's something, man. Yeah. And he's willing to look past your criminal record. And he's just like, nah, that's not what I need right now, man. I need to get right. I'm like, yeah, but getting right sometimes means getting distracted. Yeah. Like getting your mind off of this this squalor. I mean, you go into his place, he's sitting in a fucking dark room with the shades drawn on, like, yeah, playing poker on his, on his, on his laptop. I'm like, so you can't be here, though. You know? Yeah. You can't be here. I'm yeah. like, but I'll tell you what. Reach out to me when you're ready to do it. Yeah. Because I'll still talk to them. But this is not, and I've been through it. I've been through fucking really bad bouts of depression. And I'm like, I'm telling you that this, the solution is not to sit here in fucking misery. Yeah. You need to get out there and make your own fucking dent in the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yeah, man, that's, that's just, uh, that's it. I just brought that one up because it was fairly recent. I was just like, yes, you know, it's, it's kind yeah. of, uh, crazy that that stuff happens. Um, yeah, I have yeah. that shit too. I have that shit too where there's just a shit ton of friends just dying, but some of them are just even fucking sudden for no reason. But I was going to get to like the whole history with me. And, you know, I just want to give a quick disclaimer is that because because, you know what, you don't you don't realize this. You know, we, we, we were raised in like the 90s where everybody's like, oh, fuck this person. This is a dumbass. So what I'm saying is we were raised around fucking like people like Andrew Dice Clay or like these fucking dumb broads. Mm. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I didn't realize until I met somebody like my wife mm. that there are good women out there. Because I would yeah. like, I'm saying this because I respect women. And I didn't realize that the reason why I was so like, this, this fucking dumb broad, this bitch, this hoe, because my whole family consisted of really foolish fucking women. <laughs> and, it, and it affected me so much that it, 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 you know, it's like that Freudian shit about who, or is it, I, I don't know, the, uh, Nietzsche, where who you fuck. Like, when I first started going out with chicks, the thing that turned me on was hi- the stupider she was, the hotter it was for me. Because I'm like, this, this, she's just a cum dumpster slave to me, you know? Yeah, you're uh, you're almost like uh, dehumanizing her. Yeah. So what, I mean, but let's talk about what, like, so what happened to me as far as, like, we're, I guess we're going to talk about my ma. My, my brother's going to hate this fucking episode because he had a different experience. I mean, okay. I'm just going to say fucking, like, you know, the truth is there, there's a, a side of the story. B side of the story and then the actual story. I'm gonna right. try and narrow it down to like the center story, you know? Yeah. So like the thing with my mom is like so okay. <coughs> so so story goes, my ma was going out with this guy um in Poland for a long ass time. They were supposed to get married and everything. And then she married my dad on accident. Cause my dad was like, yo, listen, I'm gonna go to America. I, I can, I, I'm like amazing, you know, I'm an amazing jeweler, so I'm going to fucking like start up my own business. Yeah. The American dream. Like take care of you. I'm going to yeah. take care of you. Like honestly, as as cheesy as this sound, a lot of people hate on the movie Scarface because yeah. it's like, they, they just get stupid and like macho or yeah. whatever. That scene in the beginning where it's, it's reading off all that info about immigrants and about the American dream, mm-hmm. that shit makes me tear up like every time. Like with that fucking music because it's like... That's what every fucking I call it immigrant mentality. Like that's that's how I realize I'm different from other people. Mm-hmm. I always find I'm sure you're the same way. You find fucking loopholes. It's like it's like fucking Jeff Goldblum in in Jurassic Park. Life finds a way. You know, yeah. I re, I realize like cuz obviously my wife is American, whole family's consumer Americans in her side. And I'm like and they even tell me like my sister-in-law told me she's like, "Philip, I don't know what it is, but the amount of jobs you've been through, the amount of ruts you've been through, like you always get out of those ruts. I'm like, yeah, because I find a fucking way. It's that immigrant mentality. Yeah. It's the hustle, yeah. whatever you got to fucking do. But besides that point, so my mom was going to marry this guy. She's like, fuck this guy and went with my dad because he said he's going to go to America. So they get to America, get to Chicago, obviously because Chicago's like... It was. I don't know if it still is, but it's got a larger Polak population than Warsaw, you know. Okay. And, you know, see, here's here's where like 
there's there's a shit ton of trauma and I don't mind going into any of it but it's just like the the biggest I guess question and thing that I had to let go of was I didn't know who was more fucked up my dad or my mom because you know my whole life I've been told that my dad was an alcoholic he was an abusive fuck he was an asshole and I'm like yeah but what if my mom was really fucked up and that's what got him that that's what made him an alcoholic you know maybe he maybe that was his way of coping with her being out of her fucking mind mm. because see this is how I look at it differently I could just shit on my mom this whole fucking podcast but the truth is she was raised by a really abusive dad mm-hmm. abusive mom like the, the the her mom was just always depressed my grandma she was just always a fucking Debbie Downer just crying about shit when the, when her, when her dad would beat the shit out of her you know it's that it's the actual pre boomer generation of just look away you know your right. kids getting fucking sexually molested just look away she didn't get sexually molested but she got her ass beat by the dad and a part of the reason why my mom hated me so much was cuz i resembled my grandfather a lot he 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 looked like a polish fucking 1930s mobster okay and so um you know I don't know if I'm doing that look too well with this mullet that I got going. But anyways. You're good. <laughs> but uh, no, so so they moved to Chicago. My dad starts off this. Uh, I was born in 1987. I, I forgot what fucking hospital. He starts out his jewelry business. And that kind of like after after my mom was pregnant with me, she kind of got the idea of like, oh, I could start my own business too. Mm-hmm. if you know not now that my kid's like a little older and i don't have to take like ha- have as much responsibility you don't to, yeah you don't have to like baby baby and and th- dude this is what i mean about immigrant mentality like one of the okay one of the examples i always tell people is college everybody's like college is a scam it is a scam college is a total i'm not going to get into that because we're talking about death and trauma but i i got forced to go to college by my mom so what did i fucking do I signed up for ROTC. I had epilepsy since I was 16 years old. Right. I just didn't let them know that I had epilepsy. So they paid for my first two years of college, and then two years later, oh, yeah, actually I have seizures. Honorable discharge. They paid for my college, didn't have to fucking serve at all, do any active duty. So it's like that's immigrant mentality. You fucking do what you can to get by. What I did was completely legal. You just got to fucking hustle. So what my mom did when she went to start her own business, she worked for all these like drapery and sewing companies. Mm-hmm. You ever fucking, you, you know when you start at a company now and they have you sign that agreement, like you cannot share any of our business like secrets or whatever? Yeah. She basically went there and wrote down every single customer that they had. Yeah. And then and then she used it for her own business. For clients, yeah. So around that same time, my dad was getting fucking drunk. He was beating the shit out of her. He actually, I almost see, I, I like, it's stamped in my mind. I, he almost killed my mom in front of me because uh, I remember, I just remember waking up in the middle of the night to screaming, my mom like trying to grab me out of bed and it was like really wet. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. He split her head open and it was, it, her, her hair was just covered in crusty blood. Like blood dries quick. I know from getting my head split open by my neighbor, right. but yeah, her head was just covered in fucking blood. He, uh, this is gonna be great material for if anybody roasts me, yeah. you know. But any, uh, so she locked me in this closet because she's like, he's gonna fucking murder you. He's gonna murder you. Mm-hmm. My brother was way too young, so I was just holding my brother in my hands. Mm-hmm. And I remember the cops coming, and I didn't see my dad for a long time. And for a period there, it was pretty okay to be honest. That was the worst of it that that, you know, my my dad was violent all the fucking time, too, because he was drunk. So, yeah, maybe maybe he was an asshole. But, you know, I always I always like from from going to EMDR and therapy, what I've been told is like your parents were just fucking people. It's like it's like all the people in the hood. They're just parents. They're they're people who should have never fucking had kids. But right. Polish people are Catholic, so they don't believe in abortion. They're like right. we're gonna fucking do, we, we, whatever is gonna happen, we're gonna fucking have you. Mm-hmm. And I remember, for a little bit, my mom was pretty happy because like my grandma came from Poland. She lived with us to take care of us. My grandma probably took care of me longer than my mom did. And same like, here. 
my, my my grandma was okay i mean she was just she was just a goofy old old school broad like she just made like i mean i still like this is the shit that makes me like nostalgic and almost like teared up from happiness like she used to fucking make old school chicken soup and i've never fucking tasted that kind of chicken soup in my life and and when i mean old school i mean she'd be fucking she'd be listening they had this polish am radio station where they just do the radio for eight hours a day yeah they just do the fucking they do the rosary for eight hours a day oh my god so she's at the so she'd be in the kitchen like boiling this fucking chicken soup for six hours actually from chicken not broth not some fucking yeah no like the bone broth and everything making it there dude and she she even would take flour and make home make like noodles like the way you fucking roll strings with play-doh yeah yeah. she'd make everything was homemade that i never had fresh chicken soup like that in my life yeah it was fucking amazing and uh so um did you learn how to make it no, no, yeah. I never, I never fucking. They don't even. I even go to the Polish store and ask them, and they like, they're like, that's, that's some depression era shit, you know? Yeah. No, like they don't know. <laughs> so, so, but, so, anyway, so like, so there was a little while that was good, but what happened was, and here's where shit started going down, mm-hmm. is like, they always like, and this is where I'm like, what's the word? Like, there's no fucking trauma that is that I have that's hate driven. Or, or there's no thoughts that are hateful anymore. It's just the truth. And the truth was my ma was raised by a fucking narcissist. And a lot of those qualities pass on through nurture. Right. And she became a fucking narcissist because as soon as she got a little taste of that fucking cash of the American dream, mm-hmm. she was, I'm selling out to the fullest extent. And that's what happened. Like she was, she her business was getting good. You know, the other thing that was fucked up about her was like, I didn't realize until I got older, but she would only date guys that were willing to work for her business. So I'd be oh, like, really? oh, yeah. So she would like that George Washington guy work for her. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. That George Washington. I'll get to that guy. All right. I'll get to that guy. But so, so like, here's just like fucked up story. So, but here's the thing. So, so before, before, like, like around the time where she was having her business booming, it was like, so when, so when, so when my dad split her head open and they got split up like legally where like he couldn't see us that was like i was maybe like six years old yeah and then around when i was 10 um he he started having visitations and what happened was is like so every fucking old Polak has to have a mercedes it doesn't fucking matter what year it is I don't know what it is. Every fucking Polak has to have a Mercedes. Whenever you see a Mercedes, look for that Polish eagle or a flag. I don't know what the fuck it is, but they have to have a Mercedes. I never even liked Mercedes before. To me, it's like driving a limo. It's probably because those are cars that are in Poland mostly. Yeah. And so, but anyway, so like, so he's driving. So he took us on this visitation. It was me, my brother, and then my grandma would come along because they were like part of DCFS or like, oh, you know, he... Mm. He's a violent motherfucker, so she needs to come along. And I remember this, like, clearly. We were driving by. Do you remember Forever Young? Oh, yeah, dude, the toy store. Yeah. It was awesome. I think it's still there. It's a no? pizza place now. Oh, I it just is? drove yeah. by it today. Oh, shit, yeah. They used to so, sell old school toys. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So for anybody who doesn't know, like, Forever Young was just, like, it was all vintage toys and comics. Like, there'd be, like, Star Trek fucking action figures or wrestling action figures or, like, the very first Superman comics, you know? Yeah. The last time I went there, Marcel was a year old, and they had little prepackaged bags of, like, 1980s and 90s McDonald's toys. Oh, wow. They were fucking awesome. Yeah. But, yeah. So, uh, f- so like, so we're driving by that, and I tell my dad, I'm like, can we, like, is it okay if we go to this toy store, like on the visitation, because he's just spending time with us. He's like, yeah. no, we're getting dinner first. I'm like, if you don't get me a toy, I'm going to make this car crash. And I was just joking. And you know how they, you know how they have the, in like Mercedes and in Hondas, they have that shifter in the middle, yeah. e- even if you're, uh, even if it's automatic. Yeah. I just put my hand on it and he fucking knocked my lights out. I blacked out and I woke up in the middle of some random street. I didn't know where the fuck I was. So he, so he knocked me out and then he threw me out of the car. And then he took off with my grandma and my brother. So the cops, when they fucking heard about that shit, they're like, they charge him with kidnapping. They're like, this guy's a scumbag. Yeah, you know, tec- like you know, technically he didn't do like some ransom shit where he where he's holding a hostage, but he threw a fucking kid out of a car 
And then because they took a, he took off he took off with my grandma and my brother because he panicked. He's like, oh my god, I'm gonna get in trouble. Yeah. I'm regretting this. Mm-hmm. Like he he didn't like take off and was missing for days. He turned himself in in a few hours. But they fucking charged him with kidnapping, and they were like, all right, it fucking ends here. Mm-hmm. And then around that time, my aunt moved in, dude. My aunt and my mom, hugest fucking cunts in my family. They've okay. always been cunts. Like her sister. Yeah. Okay. They've always been cunts. I, I think I mentioned before on the, like so my mom my mom was just super critical, super anxious, get thrown into a panic attack mm-hmm. immediately. And I I learned this shit through through my therapy was that she like the way you know, it's called neural patterns. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like when you learn a neural pattern, so what it means is everything stems from your childhood. Mm. So you learn thing, you learn something when you're a kid, it's hard to unlearn that. Like in EMDR, they teach you, you mm. probably, this is like a proven fact, every fucking morning, you probably put on the same side shoe on first mm. and tie the same shoelace first. Yeah, probably. So if you, if you put your left shoe on first, you probably learned as a child to do that and just kept doing that. Mm. And if somebody was like, no, you should do your right one, it's going to be hard to unlearn that. <coughs> so what I fucking learned with my mom was she'd get thrown into these panic attacks and frenzies and she sort of like fucking put it on me to like as a kid i learned that it was like my responsibility to cheer her up so i got a lot of guilt and 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 the more and more you know i'm understandable now because i'm like she had to fucking like she had to it's a lot for a woman to deal with to be a single mother you're fucking the person you married is a piece of shit yeah now you got to take care of these kids on your own so what she did was just focus on that fucking business a hundred percent that's why i was always with my with my fucking grandma and my aunt was just a critical cunt like she's just like mm. i can't tell you how many times she told me i'm a fat ass or i'm disgusting like she always like it's so weird like she'd make these like sour like she just had a mouthful of lemons face she does it to this day, no. like anything, like you, you got a fucking fuzzball on your hoodie. Oh my God, that's so disgusting. And she always had this like fucking stupid Polak actually, her favorite fucking quote. Was she competitive with your mother too? Like my kids are doing this. Well, what's funny is she thought that she was going to have like the perfect fucking marriage with my uncle <clears throat> and you know, like they, they had, an, they had a pretty nice apartment set up and like there she was just like it was so fucking weird like my mom was just trying to like live that american dream financially my aunt was like she wanted to do everything that was that she thought was cool like she fucking she loved why her favorite fucking show was friends even though she could f- barely understand what the fuck they were saying i hate that fucking show every and, and she would like she would read these fucking like rolling stone magazines and whatever that was like the top billboard cds she'd buy them all and i think i mentioned this in another podcast yeah you like, did yeah, like I, I would just steal them because I'd be like, okay, wait, she likes ACDC and Seal and Metallica and The oh. Cure. There's no way she like like, oh, this is the no CD. We have to listen to it. It's it's so cool. Oh my Seals God. in there? That's yeah. Stupid. Okay. I still like Seal, man. Don't make. Let <laughs> me kiss on a robe. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, so so, and, and so so, and and here's the thing is like my aunt started having fucking like these uh like friends type parties with all her you know other Polak friends and one of the one of the chicks that were in her circle cuz at the time she went to school to be a physical uh therapist one of the chicks she went with that would go to the parties is is a person my uncle cheated with and you know that t- I don't really I can't really speak on that BF cuz like it tore them apart but I told my uncle I was just like congratulations bro cuz my <laughs> cuz my aunt was always dramatic always just uh, just a shitty fucking person and like and that's the thing too is like she she always shat on my mom for every fucking thing like hmm. how how she dressed how like what what she's doing in her life like that's just how I don't know if that's how sisters are but anyway so my ma she starts off this business you know, I didn't, I, and, and you know, the, that, that was the weirdest thing is like my, my mom didn't take me to therapy until somebody mentioned that I might have ADD and we went for like mm-hmm. one or two visits. And after that, cause my mom was so fucking religious, mm-hmm. she like would take me to the priest 
to like try and do a fucking like exorcism ritual, you know? Like even when I even when I got epilepsy, she's like, "Oh no, this is just the devil in you." You know, <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. So you have gotten that peace peace stew and just started spitting it out everywhere like the exorcist. Yeah. Speaking about that, isn't that the exorcist right there? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got the movie poster. I started fucking my asshole with a crucifix. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me and my man cunt. Fuck me and my man cunt. Well, they shouldn't have made a they shouldn't have made a cross so phallic. Yeah, you I can't know, right? do that with you can't do that with a Jewish fucking star. Yeah, <laughs> well, a dreidel's actually. Oh, a dreidel! You could kind of spin it into. Yeah, there, there you, you know? go. Dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. Yeah. I put it in my ass. But uh, <laughs> so 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 here's the thing. So like, but that's so 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 the thing that made my mom kind of fucked up because this affects the whole family is like, <laughs> she'd move from boyfriend to boyfriend, and she would like every time some shit went down. She'd have to get a new boyfriend and move somewhere else. New boyfriend, move yeah, somewhere. Start over. So, so the Change whole the fucking scene. so so her whole life, she's like running from her problems instead of like seeing a therapist for fucking panic attacks. For I mean, there'd be so many nights where she's just screaming and throwing plates, literally fucking like that sister in Godfather, just like just like yeah. I don't know what it's called. It's like a woman tantrum, you know. Yeah. So. Next thing, my mind. Here's where sh- here's where stuff really got shitty, and this is this is what like, I mean, I know this sounds cheesy, but I mean, this might be an in- informative fucking episode. But here's the shit that like probably affected me the most for the rest of my life. You know, you know how you're saying you see all these people that died from your school, and it affects you. Right. What affected me was like, bro, I didn't learn English till I was like ten years old. So I was always behind. I was always behind. You know, it's like mm-hmm. if if you're born in America, it's like, all right, so, you know, you go to kindergarten, you're kind of just fucking around, just talking to different kids like, oh, how like what you're just like learning to communicate. Right. Then you move up to maybe like second grade and you're starting to like, well, I like this friend better than this friend. You're sort of like segregating, yeah. you know, who you who you like and whatnot. That's like second grade. By the time I was in second grade, that's when I first started communicating. Mm-hmm. So I was so I remember there's a fucking picture where we're in day camp. There's fucking kids with like Chicago Bulls jerseys and fucking Green Day shirts. I'm wearing a Barney shirt still. <laughs> because I'm just I'm like I'm just learning the language. So I got bullied a shit ton. But the thing is, I caught up so quick because I was just good at socializing that by the time I was like 15, 16, I had a good fucking circle. I mean, I had like you know, I had a girlfriend. I was like, I had a band. I had a best friend. I had a good friend circle. I was on the football team. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was having a good fucking life. And yeah. immediately, my mom was like, "All right, we're fucking moving." Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that shit fucked me up because, like, I spent all this time to building like this comfort zone, your own little community. Yeah, and and all my and and they all faded away. And and it was only like we only moved like maybe. 10 15 miles but everyone cut me off back then i didn't have a fucking car You're right yeah so it was like let's well, say 10 15 miles is a big difference when you're not driving getting yeah. around places so. and literally like like this is the selfish narcissism that i'm talking about was like the reason why she moved we we i was i was born and raised in chicago the reason why she fucking moved was because she wanted park ridge on her fucking business card because that's where all the fucking yuppies are. That's where Hillary Clinton was raised. Mm-hmm. Harrison Ford was from there. I didn't know Harrison Ford was. Yeah, but all, all, all these fucking, like, all these yuppies are from Park... And they're all backstabby cunts. Park Ridge... I fucking hated Park Ridge. All the people I met from Park Ridge were on, like, fucking... They had... They, yeah, they see younger people. They had drug problems. Pill yeah. issues. Yeah, dude. Everybody. It was it was hard for me to fit. Because, like, I remember, like, my neighborhood, you know... Where I grew up in Chicago, I tell people it was like that beginning scene in Goodfellas. It was just a bunch of old fucking dagos who value family a lot, who yeah. have a lot of good fucking like respectful values. You know, honor your community, stick together, don't don't let people do fucked up shit. You know, and nobody they they would fucking shit on you just for smoking a joint. And I go to Park Ridge, and they're offering me cocaine and heroin. I'm yeah. like I didn't. I'm like I didn't even know. I thought you're supposed to like smoke heroin or shoot up cocaine like i didn't even know how to fucking use it right and and there it's like loaded so here's where shit gets worse i started uh so she starts that business but i mean we're talking about this so so we're moving on to this whole death thing the point is that 
my whole life, she just kept prioritizing this business. And I was having all these problems, this friend falling out. My fucking, and I had a traumatic fucking breakup with my girlfriend. I might have told you, but. Which one? My first girlfriend. Dude, it's that first oh, love. Oh, no, yeah. The yeah. first love always fucks you up. Did I ever tell you about that shit? I don't think so. So, so I had this fucking girlfriend who, long story short, I had a best friend in Chicago that was like part of my circle there. And there's this girl, Stephanie, who she was okay looking. She was a typical blonde American girl. She looked like some bitch that would storm the Capitol. You know, just blonde chick with big tits. The thing was, she had a Jay Leno chin, so nobody wanted it. But um, so she told me, she goes, you know, I I have a crush on your best friend, my buddy Bobby Jay. And I'm like, okay, so can you, like, kind of be a wingman for me? I'm like, well, what am I going to get for it? Like, you got a friend for me? And so she hooked me up with her friend. And her friend was good looking. Like, and here's the thing is that I was surrounded by all these, like, cunty, abusive women mm-hmm. that I, I was just listening to to my meathead fucking stupid, you know, union guy friends that they're just like, yeah, you know, if uh, if you treat women like shit, they're in love with you. So I just treated her like shit. I was like, I and, and dude, it made me, I would go home like feeling bad, like th- wanting to throw up. But I'm like, well, I guess this is how you get the women to fall in love with you. You treat them like shit. And it was, it was horrible. But uh, what ended up happening is like, you know, it's a first love. So you're going to think it's like a Disney movie. You know, you fucking put all your heart into it. Dude, this is what's fucked up. Her mom, her name was Kim. Her mom was a mega Jesus freak, huge fucking Jesus freak. And what happened? Like this is this is so fucking crazy. I, I, I actually this is funny because I left the story out of the sex episode that we had. Okay. But what happened was is so, and this is this is how broken down I was. So we moved to Park Ridge, and at the time I had just started this band with my buddy Billy that I was telling you about. We had that joke metal. We had a joke metal band. Yeah, yeah, you had, yeah, I remember that. And what drove it's like a me nuts? Picture with you guys like in suits with suitcases or some shit. Yeah, and fucking Billy was kind of like our friendship was fading because I moved, and he didn't really want to say it because it puts him in a weird position. And I was, dude, I was so traumatized. I'm not even joking. I had a fucking BMX bike. Yeah. I used to strap my guitar on my back and ride my bike ten miles to his house and back every other day. Yeah. For fucking two years. Ten fucking miles on a BMX yeah. bike. Just just to have band practice. And then finally, um, he's like, you know, dude, like honestly, like this band is taking up a lot and I kinda wanna start dating girls and shit. I wanna get some pussy. He was just being I'm like, dude, I'll fucking get you pussy. Like I was like, I'll do anything. So <laughs> I'll buy you some. <laughs> so I fucking asked my girlfriend, I'm like, oh, is there any way You did tell me this? If you can set up like some orgy shit, like do you got a friend or some shit? So she fucking, there's this girl, Ashley, that she brought in who was hot as hell. She was just like, just this thick Puerto Rican chick. Like she, and and I remember her, she was like in my guitar class in grammar school. And and like funny thing is like we, I would help, I, I wanted, I would teach her guitar chords only because we would face each other. And she had that spread eagle with that schoolgirl outfit. Oh, God. Yeah. So I'm like, oh yeah, that, that's the right chord. You're hitting that right that's tone. That's a G, it's a, C, uh, it's a chord. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so we had a fucking orgy basically and I'm making out with this chick and dude, I felt so bad. This is so fucking bad. But I looked at my girlfriend and she just, and I was just like, listen, we're just going to do this once. Cause I'm trying to save my friendship. And I just remember looking at her face, <laughs> almost crying with my, with Billy's cock in her mouth. <laughs> like, it was so fucking, <laughs> it was so fucking bad. But, but, but then after the whole thing, I was like, all right, man. So you got fucking laid. Are you are you ready to fucking have a band? And he's like, no, not really. I was like, oh, you <laughs> fuck. But so what ended up happening is uh, Park Ridge went to shit. I was getting into fights all the fucking time. I actually, I beat the shit out of one guy. I have it on an episode of my podcast where, long story short, he tried fighting me. I broke his fucking nose and beat the shit out of his friends. And nobody ever messed with me again because... Park Ridge was all drugs, but they were not used to fighting. I mean, yeah. where, where I was in Chicago, like, I'm not even joking. It was like, dude, I remember this is this is how, like, old school Dago, my neighborhood was. In my old neighborhood, there was a there was, there was was a rumor. Th- this girl went out with this guy, 
and then they had a horrible breakup, so the girl spread a rumor that he used to hit her. So you got all these meathead dagos like, oh, yeah, well, we'll fucking show him. And they beat the shit out of him, and she was just lying. She was just being manipulative. So we're like, so we're like, oh, sorry, guy. Put some steak on that fucking bump on your head. <laughs> like, yeah. So then, not, not, then, the, not the good steak. And then the one day those guys found themselves at a hookah bar yeah. drenched in fucking oh, ass yeah. juice. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> no, but... um. <laughs> Anyways, so 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 okay, so it just got worse. So here's where it gets fucking really worse, and here's where I'm sorry, this is a long story, but here's where, because we're talking about death. Honestly, to be perfectly honest, here's where my mom died to me, because when she moved to Park Ridge, she got this new fucking boyfriend, this fucking asshole Irish prick. He was a piece of shit. He was he was he was one of these guys who thought he thought he was in the fucking mob. Mm. He he loved watching Sopranos. It was fucking hilarious because he had a lisp, so he'd always say all this like homo shit to me, He'd be like you fucking f- pussy, you fucking faggot, life. But, it, but I'm like, dude, <laughs> suffer and suck attach. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I got you know, I got fucking Daffy Duck here telling me how to be a man, you know. So, but he and I ended up getting into fights with him. He broke my nose one time, and my mom wouldn't do shit. My mom wouldn't do yeah. shit. And the worst, so, so here's where it gets worse. So I started having seizures. Uh, I had an episode about that when the cops beat me. But I started having seizures. And like the first three months, my mom was devastated. But then afterwards, she started acting like it's a fucking like, like it's a detriment. She was like, you're faking it. You're faking that you have epilepsy. You're, you're, you're fucking with her. Yeah. We, and I'm like, and we, we went to the doctor, we got an MRI, we got an EEG, and she's like, no, no, he's manipulating MRI. And they're like, he's manipulating MRI. He's got a, he's, he, he, he's fucking Mewtwo from Pokemon. Like, he just knows how to yeah. use his psychic mm-hmm. power. And she's like, yes, he is lo- he's, he's looking for attention. Because he has devil inside. <laughs> so, dude, I, I, just, I felt abandoned because here I am. I mean, dude, I can't tell you how many moments I could have fucking killed myself, but I didn't. Because yeah. it was like, bro, here I am, lost my friends. Oh, I didn't end the thing with the fucking girlfriend. So, you know what happened? Her mom was a Jesus freak. She heard about this whole orgy shit. Mm-hmm. And... I'm not even joking. So after, so like literally maybe a month after this whole orgy. Why would she hear about that? Because she fucking told her. (sighs) And here, so here's what happened. A month later, I go over to her house just to pick her up. Like, like regular day. Oh, hey, we're going on a date. We're getting some hot dogs or whatever. She's like, my daughter is gone and she's never seeing you again. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, you're not letting me see her. Like, I was like, oh, whatever. She'll like sneak out and come to my house. She's like, no, I sent her to a Jesus camp in Montana and she's going to be stationed there for the next four years. I'm like, are you fucking kidding I me? I bet you she's everything but a Jesus person now. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> so, so like every fucking Catholic schoolgirl, they turn into sluts, you know? Those like are the so, worst ones. So, so, so here I am. I lost my fucking first love girlfriend, lost my entire friend circle, lost my best friend, broke up my band. I'm fighting with this Irish fucking prick every fucking day who's calling me a faggot. And now I got seizures and I'm being told that they're fa- like I couldn't be more abandoned and that's where she fucking died. And, and yeah. that's that's where she died for me mentally. You know you, and 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 this is like some crate this is like I can make a joke about this. Mm. I don't know if you're going to laugh about this but this Good. is fucking disturbing. So at that time, like I love, I I still love the movie American History X. It's yeah. a great fucking movie. Remember yeah. when he curbs that guy? Obviously, of course, the yeah. most iconic scene in that movie. Yeah, dude, when 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 I fought with that guy, that the the Irish guy, mm-hmm. and and he gave me a bloody nose, and my ma didn't do anything. I went in my basement and I just stared in my mirror, and I was like, you know what? I am gonna die. <laughs> I am going to die, but if I'm going to die, I'm going to be ashamed to my mom. So I'm going to do everything I can to shame her. And I opened my mouth, I looked at the sink, and I curbed myself. I slammed my face into the fucking sink. And I shattered five of my teeth. Just heard them go down the drain. I had to get up. Because I was so fucking angry. I was so fucking angry. And and I regret it to this day because I got all these fake fucking crowns. Yeah. But... It was, it was, that's what was going through my mind. And you, and you know what's huh. even, and you know what, and here's the part that's even crazy. This, this is how fucking, like, I laugh about it now because of how fucking insane my mom was. Yeah. I called DCFS on us mm-hmm. 
being like, yo, we're around this. Because a- a- after I shattered my fucking face, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, this guy's fighting. Us. Like, why the fuck? How is this legal? You know? So I called mm-hmm. DCFS. This is how much of a fucking narcissistic Polak my mom is. DCFS shows up. And it literally, like, you know when Freddie got fingered? Yeah. When they take the wrong son? Yeah, yeah. They took my brother for, like, a day. They took him away. And they're like, yeah, we can't take him because, like, technically he's not a minor anymore after 16, <laughs> but he could live on his own when he's 18. So so, so we can't really do anything with him. Like, he has to stay. Yeah. So they took my brother, and she's like, she thinks it's like it's a fucking target exchange. Like, no, no, can you take him instead? And then we, we make exchange. <laughs> no, it's okay. Take this one. This one's one too crazy. <laughs> yeah, dude. So, so that's what made her open her fucking eyes and and – like move that guy out that guy ended up going out with her still like mm-hmm. they, like it just moved him out but they were still going out he just wasn't living there yeah and dude here's here's what's fucking here's where she gets really disturbing she just kept like so, so she kept me around and then she forced me to go to college i i obviously bro like I, I mix and master music now. Mm-hmm. I, could, I could literally get paid for it. I've done it for people on Fiverr. I've done it. I, I've mixed and mastered like six albums for people, you know, T- 12 of my own. So I wanted to go to fucking Columbia Art School. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to go fucking, you know, dye my hair green and glue myself to Leonardo da Vinci paintings for climate. Right. But I wanted to fucking get I want to go to art school so I could get hookups. You know, you 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 in network with people so you can like work for a label or just do sound at a fucking well, you're, club you're putting yourself into part of the scene yeah so yeah. my mom's like no you're going to eastern illinois because that's where that's where normal people go not fucking hipsters not you know and we changed all the locks and she threw all my shit in a suitcase on the fucking front lawn she's like you're either living on the fucking streets or you're going to that school and that's when she told me she's like you got to fucking pay for this school on your own so I'm like, so now I'm going to be in debt and going to school I don't want to go to, or I can live with this abusive fucking asshole. Right. So she moves me out. He moves back in. During that time, he cheated on her like two, three times. So she moved him out again. Here's how fucking, you want to hear a crazy fucking story. I'm, I'm about to say George Washington. Yeah, okay. Here's a fucking crazy, here, here's, how, here's how my mom was losing it. Tell me a normal person that does this. So I go to Eastern Illinois for three years drop out junior year because i was just i dude i was so immensely depressed i mean i didn't have any friends i didn't know how to make friends because i just lost all my high school friends yeah i there's nothing to do in eastern illinois literally 20 miles south of chicago it's all fucking cornfields you know pre- right so and confederate flags so like there isn't shit to do i what always town is eastern illinois in? it's a I always get it mixed up. I think it's Charleston. I always get Charleston mixed up with St. Charles, but okay. Either way, like a man lives in Peoria. That's two and a half hours yeah. south. And yeah. Once you get past like Bloomington, it's a fucking different place. It's it's fucking and and you know what drove me? You know what else was like kind of like depressing to me? All the build at least when I went Eastern Illinois, all the buildings there were like I- antique. Like they didn't. They look like they didn't fucking update it for asbestos is what i'm right, saying right no this like all the bricks were like lime green it, it it looked like animal house that's yeah. how that's how everything yeah. looked you know like when you go to colleges now they have like night nice double plane uh what is it called double plated windows where they fucking yeah, like well, they're updated <laughs> you, you, you probably fucking use a remote control on them dude the windows in my dorm were leaking air through them in the winter they have like a little fucking one knob. It, it wasn't updated since the '60s. It looked the fucking bathrooms looked e- literally exactly like the bathroom where they that still old... have colored signs on bathrooms and whites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just so so so. It was it was hor- dude. It was so boring. This is what I always tell people when we went to Eastern. Everybody kind of segregated mm-hmm. with each other. The only parties you threw were in the dorm room. There was no other because there's nothing there. It's all fucking cornfields. I know exactly what you're talking so, about. <laughs> So so it was like all the black guys that played basketball, they kind of chilled in like the head basketball guys uh, room, you know, and then it was like all the football guys hang out here. I hung out with all the stoners, the fucking, mm-hmm. you know, typical Wilco and fish fans, you know. Yeah. And so here's how boring it is. We all segregated. We knew who we were. We knew who we wanted to hang out with. 
somebody asked me, they go, yo, you want to go to the show with us? I'm like, show? What show? There's no fucking venue here. No, they're like, no, they're playing in the gymnasium. I'm like, who? They go, R. Kelly. Everyone's going. I'm like, what? who wants to fucking see R. Kelly other than maybe the black basketball guys? You shouldn't, know? shouldn't R. Kelly be playing at high schools? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, so fucking, so, and, and everybody went. I didn't go, but everybody went. The stoners, the jocks, the oh fucking, because there was nothing to do. You're at that point where you're so depressed, you're going to see R. Kelly and get pissed off, yeah. you know? So, and I remember, dude, you know how depressed I was? Like, I don't even... I haven't thought about this in a while because, you know, it, it could trigger that depression. Back. But I remember I was so depressed and so anxious that people would say, you know, exercise like kind of like gets rid of anxiety. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I do? I'd fucking snort nodos, caffeine pills. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not joking. I would run full sprint nonstop for like six miles oh until I was so worn out. So you gave yourself a mini panic attack <laughs> <laughs> until I was so worn out. That I was crying because of how much my joints hurt instead of like what's going on in my life. Yeah. It, it was a horrible t- like oh it was fucking. So then I so then here's what happens. I move back home. My mom, in her usual neural pattern, mm-hmm. moves to a new house, trying to run away from her problems. Right, mm-hmm. moves to a new fucking house. So I get to this house and I'm you know I'm walking around this house. I'm like ah, you know you, you do the small talk when you come back. It's a nice oh you stay in the deck. It's a nice little yard we got. And as I'm walking by, I get home. And keep in mind, this whole time, my family was always me, my mom, and my brother. That's it. And then that Tom guy would, you know, whatever. He'd... he'd In and out. Yeah. And, and, and because I was coming back home, he moved out. That was the deal. Like, as a, he can stay there until I'm out of college. So I come home. I walk by the garage. And I look in there. And no joke, there's a motherfucker who looks like Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. Straight up Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, I met him. He's got fucking white Leslie Nielsen hair with yeah. a long ass fucking Steven Seagal ponytail, but it's yeah. fucking as but white. But his looked like a powdered wig. Yeah. yeah. He, he looked like a powdered wig. Yeah. And his glasses were like on the edge of his fucking nose, and they were the ones that, like, there's no rim around them. Yeah. They're just square. They're like little, like, uh, they're like, uh, like he's writing his, uh, the, like he's signing the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucking so I So I walk by the garage, and I'm like, Ah, uh, so it reminds me of like in Clockwork Orange yeah. when he when he moves back, you know, when he comes back from jail, and they oh, and the and the and they have the therapist there, and he's like, hey, so he's like grabbing his leg. No, 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 but, but no, no, no. But when he moves in, they rented out his room to like that bo- that bodybuilder guy who's like who's like oh the, yeah 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 yeah, and, and he just sits down and he's just like, hey. Who's the big bulk fella sitting right over there at the dinner table staring at me? <laughs> and they're like, well, son, we know you've gotten into some trouble, so we've rented out the room for you, and we don't really find you welcome here after your condition, you know? <laughs> and he's like, so you're kicking me out? You know, like, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, so, I'm, so I walk in, I walk in, I, I walk past his garage, and I'm just like, hey, ma, who's that little George Washington Thomas Jefferson fella soldering <laughs> shit in the garage? <laughs> Because I'm not who fuck- might this colonial fuck be, dude, dude. Dude, I'm not even fucking kidding. He was soldering a pocket Walkman to a hair dryer to a CD player. He was just hooking them all up to. He was like, he, it, it, it was like the Polish Honey I Shrunk the Kids, just making this fucking what weird fuck ass. What was he making? I I have no idea. And now here's where the really fucked up story is. Remember how I told you my mom uses dudes to work for her business? Yeah. All right. And remember how I told you she was going to marry some guy in Poland, but then my dad took her? Initially, yes. Yeah. That guy that she was going to marry was Thomas Jefferson. That was the guy? Yeah, his name is Kaz. Oh, okay. All right. His name's Kashmir. (laughs) Kashmir? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, 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 so So here's what happens. So my mom had a really like. Here's the one thing I. Here's here's she. Here. She didn't marry George Washington because she came here and found a guy who was yeah. making Benjamins. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. She had that money on her fucking mind. She's like, well, he's on the dollar bill. May as well move him in. Get a few fucking pointers, you know. Maybe maybe if if he fucking you know sl- slides in the side of my panties, I'll be a stripper for him. Do you him, think you know? your mom ever looked at a dollar bill and just went? <sighs> maybe one day what I'll I be left on, behind. Yeah. So fucking so 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 here's what's fucking insane. Here's what's fucking insane. 
I will say the good thing. Dude, my mom was incredibly successful. Oh, you know, I'm going to write a bit about this. I haven't written one yet, but I don't know if people know this about me. My mom had a, we, we had a, I, I didn't know this until I had a bully friend of mine. You know, like when you were in grammar school and just like when you hung up, when you hung out with a crew, like the, guy, the kids you play tag with, there might be people you didn't like, but they would all go to your house. Yeah, I mean, at times, like, especially everybody used to get together in my house because I had yeah. cold and I. Yeah, like, 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 yeah, exactly, like that. Yeah. There, like, there was some reason, like, yeah. or if you had a birthday party, you invited four kids, yeah. but they wanted to bring somebody, and one of them you might have not yeah, liked. Like, All right, that's fine, bring them. So, so one of my bullies came over to my house, and he's like, "Bro, you got a fucking sweatshop." I'm like, "No, what's a sweatshop?" He's like, "You know where the fucking Chinese kids sew soccer balls." I'm like. No, I don't. He's like, dude, you got fucking. I'm, I'm not joking. My mom had 20 sewing machines in the basement. She had Park Ridge. She had it. When I went At, downstairs one time, every every house that we lived in, we had 20 sewing machines. Mm-hmm. All day, you hear the air compressor going off. 20, like like literally, 10 hours a day. Brrr, like every fuck i just got used to it you know because yeah. because when you're when you're raised around it as a kid you just you think nothing of it. he's like you got you got a fucking polack sweatshop and i'm like it's not a sweatshop because they're not asian because <laughs> you know, like, i was raised around all these fucking racists you know say, like, they're coming around with those with those fucking aprons and the masks and they're just carrying ba- bags of cocaine and cutting them yeah yeah i thought yeah i thought when you said that i pictured the, the way they fucking came in to raid et you know and they, yeah Run, E.T. But, but, but you're talking about like New Jack City where there's a bunch of naked black Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking, fucking with cutting cocaine, cocaine all and shit. Over, all over their salami. One of them shaking tits. on the ground. <laughs> yeah. So, so, fucking, so, so yeah, my mom, had, my mom had a Polish sweatshop. She hired Polish people to pay them shit and take advantage of them. And because she, dude, this is the biggest thing that drove me nuts. She didn't trust. So, so this is, this is another reason why I got a bad idea of women because all the women in my family and this happens in every this this happens in my wife's family they go through a divorce and they just turn into like either feminists or the hugest cunts well it's it's like it's, they it's they, they the, never get over it it's the resentment yeah it's the anger and they resentment they never get over it they're they're yeah. like fuck all men you were with a shitty fucking man there's a sea yeah. of men. Yeah. There's a sea, especially in 2022. You have no reason to go through that. Like you have fucking dating There's a sites. sea of men. Seamen? Yes. Those okay. guys. Those, <laughs> you date a fucking sailor covered in jizz. Uh, oh. A little comment that uh, Amanda didn't like too much. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, oh man, she's going to be done when she hears this, but yeah. she's making, she's like, she's like with, with a fucking in the dark with a headlamp taking notes. <laughs> she's, of this over podcast. she's over it now. I no. just I don't want to hear that one again. <laughs> no, so 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 here's the thing. My mom had yeah, my mom had a fucking sweatshop, but here's where she fucked up. Number one was she didn't trust anybody. Dude, when you think of a boss of a fuck and, and, and I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this, like my mom, she did one of Oprah's apartments in the John Hancock Center. Well what is called no. the Willis Tower. She did one of her apartments. She did I think she did a property that Mike Ditka owned. And then yeah. the biggest thing like she the did restaurants. Yeah, the biggest thing she did, which the side effect was unbelievable amounts of anti-Semitic remarks from my mom. Okay, okay. Was she did you know Lori on Shark Tank, the hot blonde oh, one? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The one with the long hair. Yeah, yeah. She did her fucking place in Florida, and and what I'm trying to say is the reason why my mom fucked up. Was because, dude, a boss uh-huh. is supposed to kick their fucking feet on a desk and smoke cigars and jag off. That's what a boss yeah, does. Yeah. My mom didn't trust anybody. So she was always involved in everything. She was involved in every fucking thread. Every single thread. She she Every time, like literally, she went through like 40 installers to yeah. install to install curtains. She, she offered a That's guy. That's what I did for years. <laughs> she offered a guy $60 an hour. Uh-huh. But he refused because he would go up a ladder and he would like accidentally like it would be like a half inch over. She would crawl up the fucking ladder underneath his armpit like a fucking squirrel, like t- like every fucking time. And it's annoying as shit. Yeah. So, so that was one thing that she fucked up. Was that was that was that? That's why she never became super rich. She could have become super rich. Obviously, she had the clients, but she yeah. didn't fuck. She had these fucking trust issues. The other yeah. thing that she did, bro, and this is why. This is my own fucking tr- like triggered trauma and why I hate flakes. Uh-huh. 
why I hate flakes. Dude, my mom, the fucking queen of flakes. Mm-hmm. The queen. Bro, She. Uh, this is like, this is just a regular day, mm-hmm. what I'm about to tell. But it's one that I remember thoroughly. Mm-hmm. I was working, so after I, when I came back from college, I couldn't get a fucking job anywhere. So I went and took school at Triton for welding. And I just got into the whole welding thing that I, that I am till now. So I was working Monday through Thursday, 12 hour days. We'd add Fridays off. And I was like, dude, that's awesome because we can party at your house yeah. or at that fucking Ian's, you know, the fucking uh, yeah, yeah. squad house. So she goes, can I have you install on Saturday? Because nobody wants to work for me. Nobody wants to. I'm like, ma, like, I really want to fucking relax. And she's like, oh, d- but you go- you party at night and we only going to go in the morning and it's going to be a two hour job. I'm like, mm-hmm. are you sure? She's like, yeah. She goes, you wake up. I wake you up and we go to installation and you're done. And I pay you double. I'm like, all right. I wake up at seven in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I, I ate full speed. I fucking downed eggs like I'm yoking yeah. like fucking Rocky, you know, the, you know, <laughs> Stallone, you know. Yeah, I down these fucking eggs, down to coffee. I'm sitting there at 730. I'm like, so are we going? Because it's already 730. It's like, yeah, 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 just one moment. She's going squirrel on all the fucking workers. She's micromanaging every little fucking thing. Yeah. So it's fucking like 11. I'm like, are we going yet? Like, I, like I'm. what do you want me to do? Like, I, you want me to sit here all day? I'm watching TV. Like, when are we fucking... It's like, oh, we'll go. We'll go. It's, th- like, two. I'm like, I'm fucking leaving. And she's like, no, if you're leaving, I'm not letting you back in the house. We finally went at 6 p.m. We were supposed to go at 7 a.m. We finally went at 6 p.m. And she would do this shit regularly. And you know what? This is how customers fucked her off. Like like the, like that like that Lori and all these yuppies, you know? Yeah. They'd be like, yo, you showed up 10 hours late. Mm-hmm. So you got to kick half the price off because right. you're ruining business. So she, she got kind of screwed then. She, she got, screwed she, herself. She screwed herself. Yeah. She didn't know how to fucking be on time. That's why, like, that's why I cannot but stand. But it's because she was behind, like, paying attention to everybody else. Yeah. She wanted, it's not like she wanted to be on top of everything. Yeah. And she couldn't. Oh, so, so so where we started, where we where we ended off with fucking Thomas Jefferson, Kaz, right? <laughs> so he's soldering this shit in the fucking garage. And I'm asking my brother, I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And my brother just starts laughing. He's like, you won't believe this shit. Hold on. Like, like we'll talk later. Because he didn't want to make my like my like make my mom mad. Yeah. So I go upstairs and I ask him, I'm like, what the fuck is this? He goes, so this dude, here's the story about this dude. I, forgot, I, I, I completely went off on a tangent. This dude, so my mom was going to marry him in Poland. And then she kind of run away bride yeah. his ass. So he moved to New York, the immigrant dream, started a fucking diamond business. I don't know how the hell you do that in New York because I figured like all yeah, the Jewish it's, people. It's all involved. There's Uncut gems. There's, I figured, there, there's no way that you're going to just go in there and, and corner that market. Yeah. So, <laughs> But he actually was really successful. He actually made a million dollars a year. So he was a millionaire. But then... It's fucking New York. So he hired all these shady fucks who started pocketing diamonds and literally like robbed him of like millions of dollars. So he had a fucking mental breakdown and now he was homeless. So my mom, like months before I came from school, she she does a job in New York for some designer. She sees this fucking Thomas Jefferson on the street dangling a fucking cup with a nickel in it. And she just broke down crying. She's like, oh my God. I can't believe this. You know, like it was it was her old love. So, so she it's how she found him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So she she tells him, she's like, Do you think you can work? So she moves this fucking homeless ass in our house. Okay. So I'm like, I'm t- I'm telling I'm telling my brother, I'm like, bro, because here's the thing. This is just the truth. This is what all my therapists told me. Me and my brother fought for years. We're on great fucking terms right now. That's why I don't want to say I don't want to run my mouth too much that anything would piss him off. But the truth was, my I got all I got the fucking barbed wire end of the baseball bat in the relationship. Mm-hmm. I got all the fucking hate. I got all the trauma. I got all the physical abuse. I got all the mental abuse. And my brother was kind of he kind of like disassociated himself. He's an escapist. Yeah, that's why he's obsessed with video games because he he's like I'm just gonna pretend this isn't happening. Because I told him even at that time I'm like, dude, so mom. So, so I'm like, let me get this straight, okay? You have an ex 
from decades ago. You see that they're fucking homeless and that they lost their mind. So your idea is to move them in, <laughs> you know, like a bad idea. Like what the fuck? <laughs> that's some that's something a horny dude does. Like ah, uh, yeah, that's like a Patrice O'Neill joke. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, she looking cute behind yeah. that dumpster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at her with garbage in her hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so 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 she fucking moved him in, and I'm like, so we we're living with a homeless fuck. What is, this is? How do you, he he might shank us in the middle of the night? You know, like. So we find she finally kicked his ass out because he was doing some weird shit. I mean, he never did anything like physically fucked up, like, but he was just like something weird. I don't know, fucking hiding the milk on the roof or something. You know, just some cracked out homeless shit. You know. Uh, so she moves him out. He was the guy on the couch. Yeah, he was. <laughs> and fucking so, moving on. You know, basically what happened is. My mom really had a fucking mental breakdown because the house that she the when when I came back from college, the house that she got, yeah. she got it with you know that fucking Irish prick that I used to fight Tom. Yeah, they split money to buy that house. Which the, one, the Park Ridge one? Yeah, the one. Yeah, the one that you knew. Yeah, that 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 I used a to night or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. That house was four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, but she split it with him, so they like. So she split it with him. She split the down payment with him. Okay, down payment. And then, and then, she, uh, he wanted to like you know, uh, I'm never gonna cheat on you, so you can put your name on the deed. <laughs> like, so she signed the deed because he was trying to be tr- please. <laughs> so he, he was he was trying to be all trustworthy by yeah. putting her the house under her name well then he booked so she stuck with this fucking house all the payment all yeah. the payment yeah which she can't have so she had a fucking mental breakdown you know and she just got worse and worse and we got dude i can't even get like bro even my wife I'm not joking. Every girlfriend, Caitlin, Kathleen, Kit, every fucking girlfriend went through where my mom doesn't like the girlfriend, some Freudian shit. Mm-hmm. So she pretends that I hit her, and then she she says, "Why are you with this man who ab- who who like beats his own mother?" She did that with every fucking girlfriend I was with, every really? single one. Yeah, dude, Caitlin ran out of the house screaming one time because of it, and I and I'm like. I literally like I literally would like tell my girl I'm like dude do you see how big I am I would send my mom into a coma if I right. even put my hands on, like actually when it when it happened with my wife like this is a simple example and and, and, it, and it reminds if, me of Big J he's talking about I would never f- be with a guy like that because he can just beat the shit out of me he goes well, I can beat the shit out of you <laughs> yeah, you yeah. That? <laughs> yeah I did. But yeah, but you, you know, you, you know, you know what made my brother, my, literally my brother, like spit up his food laughing because, mm-hmm. so so, there's a fucking I love Frasier the TV show. Yeah, I love it too. There's a fucking hilarious episode where Niles, his brother, uh, Neil Patrick, not Neil Patrick, what's his fucking name? Uh, you're thinking of uh, yeah, I forget his name. You're, cause you're you're thinking of the other gay dude, Neil Patrick yeah. Harris. Yeah. Uh, no, it's uh, I, I forget his name. I forget his name, yeah, but, but I know who you're talking but, about. But Niles from Frasier. Yeah. There's an episode where something happened where um, the he he go the coffee shop that they go to, they did something to them where uh, he got into a lawsuit. Mm-hmm. So they try to go there again, and um, so, so something happened that pissed off Niles. So he goes there and he pulls like what people in the hood pull, where mm-hmm. they like slip in the no caution area to try and get like to try and sue them yeah so so this like this waiter is like carefully walking over this cup and then he runs into him but then he like does like five cartwheels and falls through the window like making it seem like oh my god he hit me like my mom niles her ass she niles her ass like i just like bumped into her and she just like oh he hit like so so here's what happened here's here's what happened with my wife and and it fucking freaked out my wife and my brother's ex so we all we had like a double date you know because my wife was my brother's ex's best friend Mm -hmm. they were like we had a night where we i don't know we fucking smoked weed and played board games or some shit and then you know we slept there obviously because we my brother and i stayed there at the time and then um what happened is 
the next morning i i'm always dude i'm the fucking early riser i always wake up first so i wake up and i'm like i'm gonna make breakfast for everybody right right so i start cooking and dude my mom is like an autistic person yeah when the fucking smoke detector went off yeah it would just make her go nuts so i'm cooking bacon the smoke detector goes off so immediately i just like walk over relaxingly reach up to unscrew the smoke detector and like put it under like a throw pillow so that the smoke doesn't, so it doesn't get in yeah yeah i go to reach it my mom thinks she doesn't know that it disattaches from the ceiling so she jumps on a garbage can you know one of those garbage cans where you have the pedal to pop it open yeah she jumps on top of it starts speed bag punching me in the face she starts punching me in the face and i'm like what are you doing how did she, she do it that fast because she because she thinks that i'm gonna fucking rip the ceiling out so she's just punching me in the face and then when she gets down like I, like i literally my my nose was bleeding i grab her by the wrist and i go hey ma why don't you chill out and don't be a cunt and she looks over to the tv room and she sees that my wife is looking at her and she goes look he's putting hands on me because i'm holding her by the wrist to not punch me in the face oh that's insane it was it was fucking and she did that shit all the time she did that shit with every girlfriend i had it was fucking crazy but here's the so here's the craziest here's here's another like so that high school was the biggest dip i ever had in my life here's the second so time you it's a main south right yeah yeah here's the second biggest dip where i literally almost had my first suicide attempt because I, I don't think I really had a, like, I mean, it's a fuck, I always tell a joke. If you fail at suicide, man, like, but, <laughs> like, I didn't have an attempt. <laughs> you it fail was, at suicide. It, it was an attempt because I would have succeeded. But here, here here's where it was the absolute worst was, so here's the thing. When I lived with my ma, after after college, dude, she changed all the locks. So I, w- I was literally like a fucking house slave. <laughs> I was literally, it was get out for me. Yeah. It was literally get out. I had to fucking ask to use the bathroom because I didn't have the key for the bathroom. I had to knock when there I was a lock to, on the in the bathroom. There was a lock on every fucking oh, door shit. in the okay. house. Yeah, it, it fucked with my head. It was unbelievable. And, and and the other thing was, remember how I told you she'd have these random breakdowns? Like literally, literally at least twice a month, she would just start screaming, crying, and throwing shit. So. While I was, when I moved back, I was working at these welding jobs. Dude, these welding jobs, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., you know? I'm trying to get some fucking sleep. She's having a depressive episode, so she's locked in her room, and she's blasting, depressing Andrea Bocelli opera and just and just wailing, crying to it. And I'm like, this is insane. This is fucking, this is a Alfred Hitchcock movie, you know? Yeah. So, So what happened is like, I fu- so so this is this is the second dip in my life where things got fucked up. I started to save up money and I get the first chance to move the fuck out. My mom goes she goes uh she started crying because there is this area um for people who don't know it's Cumberland and Lawrence where I had my condo. There's a, there's a yeah. there's a hot condominium area called I forgot what it, it was Catherine Courts near uh Norwich. And what happened is this is the true story. These mob guys bought these fucking buildings, right? And what they, what the reason why I found this out years later, because what they were doing is, they were skimming off the association, so they really, it, it, there was never upkeep. Yeah, they, they didn't keep up with anything. They yet. just, they just never cleaned anything. So they were, they were taking the association money, but not doing anything. Because I remember the first day I moved there, mm. you know, like how you live in a condo. There's well, like I, I went to that place one time. Yeah, yeah, but but you know when you live on a floor, you know each person. You're like, all right, yeah, this yeah. fucking person is the, 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 the y- y- When you walk past it, there's a cloud. Like, oh yeah, that's that person that is in three hundred two or yeah. whatever. Yeah, the, the, this person's there's a cloud of curry smell. This person yeah. there's fucking this person's a drunk and he's always screaming. This person blasts fucking club music. Like yeah. every person has a personality. So the fucking person in my house that was a drunk, he threw up in that elevator the first time I moved in. And when I moved out three years later, the throw up was still there. So they never fucking So so here's what happens. My mom buys this condo. There's an auction. It was worth like a hundred and ten thousand. She fucking bought it for sixty grand at an auction. Yeah. yeah. Great price, right? So turns out, like every foreign fucking mom, she's gonna go chancla on her fucking, you know, kids. She's gonna pull out the chancla on their ass. 
but she can't be disrespectful to strangers. She doesn't. She doesn't know how to be. Dis, she doesn't know how to be disrespectful to strangers. That's how my mom was. Yeah. So these tenants were just ripping her off, and she's going into another depressive tantrum, throwing shit, blasting opera, and fucking. She's like, I don't know what to do. I I wasted my money, and they they don't want to move out. I'm like, well, why don't you sell it to me? Like, this is my fucking chance. And this is around the time where I started selling a shit ton of weed. I sold weed for maybe about seven years. Mm -hmm. And my thing was, long story short, was I I sold large quantities. So I sold the same amount as like a mule. Like literally, the, the lowest quantity you could buy from me was like a quad. So it was like big risk, big reward, you know? Right, but you're also not sitting there having 20, 30 people come for little fucking pieces. Yeah, yeah. No, fuck that. Then to your house? So, yeah. yeah. No, hell no. So so what happened is um, we'll get more into that whole thing later because yeah. it's a we have an episode for that. But, you know, so, like, I was saving all this money from weed. I was saving all this money for working full-time being a welder. I'm like, I could pay this fucking apartment off. She goes, you know what? Because you are my son, I sell you full half price for 30000 I'm like, holy shit, 30000 yeah, bro? Yeah, beautiful. Selling weed and welding. I paid that fucking... I was at 28000 in, like, a year and a half. That's how quickly... Because of all the fucking profit I was making. So I moved in there, and, and, and things were going good. My my roommate, Greg... I remember that idea. He, he moved in there... He was an alcoholic, but he didn't. He wasn't. He was the alcoholic that gets wasted and passes out naked. He right. didn't do any fucking like. He wasn't like there, there. I didn't have any problems with him. It was. It was. It was going great. But then here's what. Here's where my dip comes. One of my best friends, my buddy Derek, completely cut me off. And dude, it, it's so funny because they're like these fucking losers. These like rancid punk crusty punks would like yeah. they'd be like what were you gay for him i'm like no uh he was a good friend of mine i know that's something you're not used to because you got your ass kicked in high school with your fucking septum piercing mm-hmm. but he was a good friend of mine he was one of the guys yeah. and then he just cut me out cut me off so i lost my best friend i my band broke up and then here's the fucking cherry on top because those buildings were not on good upkeep and it didn't even have to do with that if you look it up on the news that year was the biggest bed bug infestation in Chicago. Yeah, I remember when that happened. Ever. Yeah. It was like 2015. Biggest fucking infestation ever. Yeah, I we know had this. It too. I know this because my buddy, who I was selling weed to, <laughs> it's it's funny as hell because he's the most liberal guy, but he looks exactly like Matt Walsh. I could show you a picture <laughs> after. But he he fucking um he was the president of Palatine Library. I think he might still be. So, but he was buying wheat for me, and he told us they had to fumigate the fucking library, yeah, for for a week. Right. And the thing is, bed bugs probably go got at, carpets and shit in there too. Yeah, they're not, they're hard to get rid of. And the, and the thing is, bed bugs go after <laughs> blood. That's yeah. all they go after. And think about that. Think of how much of an infestation it is when they go into a building that's all carpet and books. You know. Yeah. So I, our fucking my apartment got like loaded with but and, and you know it was so fucked up when i noticed it i have a video of it i can show you yeah i just woke up one morning i was i was i started dating kelly my wife yeah, you have bites all over your fucking dude yeah my my i just woke up and i had blood in my hands i was like is this fucking stigmata you know i'm the yeah. i'm the new jesus the second coming Aww. and and i just i was like what the fuck and then i just like i was like kelly didn't wake up so i just like kind of did the you know you put your hands behind your head and just relax mm-hmm. i put my hands and i touch the headboard and I just go like this, and it was like I squeezed g- gushers in my hand. It was more blood. Yeah. I fucking moved the bed back. The entire headboard was a nest. There was like a million of them. Oh, my God. It was fucking cr- I couldn't believe that. It- and you know the thing that pissed me off the most? Mm-hmm. I didn't find this out till later. Mm-hmm. So let me, t- let me get into what I found. Remind me to tell you what happened with the headboard. But All right. What happened now? So my 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 building is my dude. The whole building is infested, right? It's bed bug season. Yeah, the whole fucking city was infested. Dude, so here's what my mom does. She gets fucking pissed because our she's like, this is because of you, because you are dirty, you guys. Because she's a fucking in, interior designer, right? So you know, we lived like it was a bachelor pad. We had somebody's yeah. fucking some broads underwear in a frying pan. Yeah. One of our socks is in the refrigerator, you know. So. She was, she's blaming it on us. So she freaks out, kicks us out. That's why Greg hasn't spoken to me. 
Because he, he was trying, dude, he was in the pr- plumber's union. He's he's trying to set up his life. Yeah. She goes, you need to fucking leave now. She doesn't even give him a 30-day, you know, legal, yeah. like, tenants deal. Yeah. Kicks him out, kicks me out, and I'm like, so what's happening? She goes, you ruined this place. You ruined it. It's infested. So she basically caulked the whole fucking place with clear silicone yeah. and sold it as fast as possible to the next sucker that would have it infested with bedbugs. And sure. then, so here's what happens. I'm like, ma... What happened to that 28000 And she goes, oh, that was rent. I'm like, no, it was mortgage because I was going to own that place and you were going to sign it over. She goes, no, it was rent. Bro. Oh, so she kept everything she, you put into that she place. She kept everything. And she had, and, and after that bed bug shit, even though it has nothing to do with her, she had no intention of signing it over to me. Bro, P, it's Chicago. People kill each other over $100. I didn't know that Google tracks you. I'm not joking. For five straight months, I was looking up how to murder her in a stealthy way. I was looking up what works to dissolve a body, whether it's bath salts or lye or some radioactive fucking like Jeffrey Dahmer barrel shit. Where should I bury her? I'm like, oh, you know, every everybody buries it in the neighbor's house or 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 in the woods. You should bury it in your your yard because they least expect it. Like I was looking at, I was going crazy. Because I'm like, dude, twenty eight grand? That's fucking yeah, insane. Screwed me. Screwed me, That's yeah. insane from your own. Mo- like, how much more do you need to abandon and betray my ass? You know. Mm. So, I'm living there for. I'm. I'm like, dude. You know what? I just like. I kept asking. I'm like, when are you gonna give it to me? When are you gonna give it to me? And she's like, I give you. I give you when you. She. She. She kept her excuse was you're going to use it on drugs. I'm like, I've. I've never done anything worse than weed. So you're you're being a fucking that's like a boomer saying, you know, a black guy did it. It's like a stupid fucking general dumb yeah. excuse, you know? So so I I <coughs> dude, I I met Kelly. Dude, Kelly's the reason why I got through all of this. I got mm-hmm. through all of it because I ended up saying like, listen, my band's gone. I cut off this fucking toxic circle. Now I I saved up enough to move out and I ended up getting this hot where where yeah. we're at right now. And even after, so so here's where shit gets even worse. My ma, what do you know? She moves again and finds a new guy to leech off of. Mm-hmm. She moves to fucking Mount Prospect and mm-hmm. finds this guy. Dude, I'm not joking. This guy looks like a tan Mr. Bean. Like Mr. Bean fucked a chimpanzee. Okay. He's the biggest piece of shit. His, his name's Gregosh. He's the biggest fucking piece of shit, bro. Okay. Because he... He would like scream, like when my mom had ALS and shit, he would like hide her keys and scream at her, not let her leave the house. He was abusive as fuck. Crazy. And I, and I was going to kick his fucking ass. And my mom didn't want me to. She's like, you're going to get in trouble. Anyways, long story short, all this. So, so near, so let's get to the death. Cause how fucking, here, how, how fucking. Sorry. Huh? It's, it's all right. I'm going to take a piss real quick. Go ahead. You good? Let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll edit this real well. What is it? Where are we at? Fucking two Did you just grab a thing of cheese? Yeah. I, to- I told you I'm doing keto, so I'm eating this fucking dildo of mozzarella? cheese. Mozzarella? Yeah, a dildo of mozzarella. But 
This is gonna distract every like. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. So here's where shit gets crazy. Fucking, my mom moves to Mount Prospect, right? And she was like, she gets this new fucking out, and and like here's here's the thing that drove me nuts. I didn't know how much my mom had saved up until she died. Mm-hmm. It was a shit ton. It was mm-hmm. a fucking shit ton. And the thing was, it was so annoying because like, I, me and my brother would get these random calls where she's like, "Oh my god, I'm in debt. I'm in bankruptcy." I need to borrow money from you guys. And I'm like, first of all, I just bought this house. I just, I, I literally just, like mm-hmm. spent all my money. Oh, my fucking cat wants some mozzarella. <laughs> Anyways, here, here. So, yeah, so, so I fucking, <laughs> I'm trying to be serious with this while I'm eating a dildo. Yeah, no, I'm like, go ahead. Cat. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so she kept calling us like, like she's bankrupt and she needs to borrow money. And I'm like, what a fucking like white people problem to have because she owned like three fucking properties. Right. I'm like, how about you sell one of them and you won't have this fucking problem? Right, right. So, and here's the thing that I didn't find out until later as well. All this trauma that she had from her dad beating the shit out of her from, from the divorce, what I didn't like really realize was Kind of how you mentioned about David. Yeah. Her escape was being a fucking workaholic, right. working her fucking ass off. When there was a fucking tragedy in her life, gotta gotta do twenty jobs, gotta overwork myself, you know. Yeah. So like, she kept telling us, uh, we're like, dude, I'm like, my, you're getting in bad shape. You can't, you can't be fucking coked out, running like a squirrel up ladders, supervising, micromanaging. Mm-hmm. You're you're fucking sixty six years old, you know. Yeah. So, like. She kept saying, she's like, I'm going to fucking retire. I'm going to go to Florida. I'm going to retire. Bro. Here's another thing that I didn't mention. Another reason why. So not to mention that she's narcissistic, selfish, prioritizes her business. This is crazy, and some people won't believe this. She literally, for like the two years that I lived at her place after I got out of college and was saving up for this house, for a year. Her diet was two pots of coffee and a salad. That's it. Damn. All the fucking. I mean, that, that that'll turn your beef, your brain into beef jerky. You're like yeah. not even getting nutrients. You're not getting nourishment. You're, 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 you're fucking diuretics. You're like. So what happened is, and here's what's interesting. My aunt told me that what I'm talking about now, when she when she uh, moved to Mount Prospect, that was around like 2000. Maybe 18. My aunt told me that around 2015, my mom went to a, a doctor for having a panic attack. You know, these fucking these fucking tantrums she goes on. Yeah. And they did an MRI, and they said she had ALS. And she didn't want to believe it. She's like, fuck you, doctors. You're like, you're full of shit. So what I'm saying is, this is, bro, this is how selfish... I keep saying this is how selfish she was because she's diagnosed with ALS, prioritizing her business, and I'm like, bro, I'm pretty sure working 14 hours a day, living off of two pots of coffee and a salad doesn't make anything better. No. Don't matter what the fuck you have. You could have, you could have a fucking paper cut and it won't make it better. You right. know, like, so, um... I understand how hard it is for you to take yeah. me seriously with well, this. I'm wondering what that's going to sound like on there. Oh, my God. So, I ended up... Um... Shit, man, that's going to get me paranoid. Like, whether it's... I'm going to ruin this episode with this mozzarella dildo. Well, let's... We'll see. See, yeah. But anyways, um, so, what ended up happening is... She got diagnosed, like... <laughs> It's just talking about death and health, and you're, you're fucking eating a whole thing of cheese. Whoa. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, so we fought, so like 2018, she got that house. And I guess, well, well, so yeah, 2015, she got diagnosed, didn't want to believe it. 2018, she gets that house in Mount Prospect. And here's what happens she's obviously coked out of her fucking mind because from all the coffee, mm-hmm. gets pulled over by a cop 
for for speeding. And remember, I told you how anxious she was. Mm. Like, that's that's. I'm telling you, anxiety can be from nurture instead of nature. Because yeah. every everything and that's how I got groomed. Like mm. throughout my life, when something happened, it was always like, oh my god, we have to do that. Like every reaction led well, to yeah. that. Every reaction led to panic. You're having a test tomorrow. You have to study right now. Oh my god, it's gonna be so hard. It's the finals. Like instead, I'm having a test tomorrow, so. I'm definitely going to do this reading. Then I'm going to take a little break. Then maybe I'm going to eat something. And then I'm going to do some more studying. Like calmly and productively. Right. She resorted to panic every fucking situation. It's uh, that like fight or flight. Yeah. Like right away. And fucking coffee and not eating anything does not help with that fucking anxiety. Well, d- yeah, definitely not. So, definitely not. So she gets pulled over. I, and I think like she didn't get pulled over for fucking years. And you know that adrenaline, not adrenaline rush, but like that. that like, shitty, ah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, when you get pulled over. Like you're just thinking of all the things that you could have wrong. Like did I, did I get that sticker? Did I do this? Is this going to cost me $100, $300? Turn, turns out she stroked out. She fucking stroked out. Because the, the officer went, to, went up to her window and she couldn't talk. She couldn't fucking, she was like Kidding. slurring words and shit. And she couldn't fucking do anything. And, you know, for a while, even, and, and, and dude. That's where, this is where the grieving part starts. Because this is how hard it fucking was. Let's start with, I know it's two hours. You, you, do you care that I'm talking about all this shit? Like, okay, no. so. So this is where, oh my God. My fucking cat, Steve, just for some comic relief with this mozzarella dildo. My cat, Steve, he's a weird bastard. Because okay. every time he takes his shit, he has to stand upright. So it's like a person standing upright and shitting. Okay. Like like with his fucking hands in the air. Is that what he's doing now? Yeah. You're kidding. Well he just he just he just leapt down. But that's what he, that's what he does. He's he stands upright like a, like that what's fucking Timon and Pumba? Timon? Yeah. Like the meerkat? Yeah. He stands <laughs> up like that when he shits. So anyways. So here's where shit gets real. Like 2019 really hit hard. I'm going to tell this whole fucking thing for the next hour because... Without cheese. Yeah. So, first thing that happens, you know, my mom gets... So, she got diagnosed. So, so here's the thing. The thing that's fucked up, all of this started in 2018 with the with the slurring, her, her slurring words and shit. Mm-hmm. She didn't... We literally didn't find out that she had ALS until like two months before she died because she didn't want to and she died this past july yeah she didn't want to fucking tell anybody like she had that she had that narcissistic fucking like you know delusions of grandeur like nothing's can stop me i'm always like i'm unstoppable there's a fucking cure and so so i'm going so not not only am i going through this trauma of my mom of her, because because what happened it, it, like the trauma was like, she was slurring, but she's like so, she's already so anxious, so panicky. Now she's asked every fucking time we hang out, am I saying my words? Oh wait, like every fucking time she's asking every time, and you have to just like suck it in and be like, no, mom, you're doing fine, it's okay, like right, you know, right, we're right. All, you have to pretend like everything's okay. And the worst part is, we weren't really pretending. Because she wouldn't tell us that she had ALS, yeah. so we're like, oh, maybe, maybe she just learned words, or you know, maybe she had a stroke, yeah. whatever. So this whole time, it's up in the air. I don't know what the fuck she has. So here's what happens next. Here's fucking 2019. I'm um, uh, or actually, I, th- I I don't know if I went over this shit. I might have gone over this shit on a, n- another podcast, but 2019, my my dad died. And the thing, here's the thing with my dad. Around that time, I forgot to mention this. Around that time where I lived in that house that you knew in Park Ridge, mm-hmm. but probably like a little bit before where I had my breakdown with 2015. Or actually, it was during it because I was trying to move into my dad's. Mm-hmm. I found out they go, "Oh yeah, he's in the hospital. You need to go visit him." So I go over there mm-hmm. and I visit him, and he's in horrendous fucking shape. Mm-hmm. And then. You know, I, I kind of like tried to rekindle my relationship, but he was acting something about him was acting weird, you know. So then I left, 
and I get because I gave him my number. Mm-hmm. He left. I'm not joking. Twenty six messages asking me to buy him cigarettes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Buy him cigarettes? Like, mm-hmm. that's this is just fucking weird, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I call the hospital like to ask him like, what what exactly is his condition? Because he was there because he got hit by a car. So I so then I go there and I ask him like, what what is the condition? They go, oh yeah. The reason why he's here is because he has dementia. I'm like, oh, really? So w- what are you trying to say? He's like, well, he the reason why he called you 26 times because he forgets everything every 10 minutes. Oh wow, okay. So I don't know how the fuck he remembered me, but mm-hmm. but they've 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 showed that in studies like where people yeah, like, there's the long term be- and then there's a yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They did that in a movie with like about like mental health where like there's like mutes. They haven't said shit in years, but then you play a song on the piano mm-hmm. and they fucking remember it, you know? Yeah. So. Well, it's kind of like uh, they do it in 50 First Dates with 10 Second Tom. It's like, hi, I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Tom. And uh, he keeps doing it. No, okay. I've never seen that. Is that what uh, Adam Sandler? Yeah, Adam Sandler and oh. Drew Barrymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, what the fuck happened now? So. She so had dementia. Yeah, yeah. They tell me he's got dementia. And I'm just like, dude. This is way too much fucking shit for me to deal with. Yeah. You know, like if I, I'm trying to rekindle a relationship with somebody who has dementia and is literally on their last days. Uh-huh. I can't handle this. I'm trying to get the fuck away from my mom. Uh-huh. So, I, uh, you know, so so I cut him off. Fast forward to 2019 in March, they call me and they go, he was one of the first people in Chicago that caught COVID. Did yeah. I ever tell you that? No. Yeah, they actually had his name on the news. Oh really? They had, okay. they, had a, they had a list of the people who are like in almost terminal condition, and they had my name on there, mm-hmm. like my last name, you know, with his name. But oh, they fucking like. I I at the time I was doing Instacart, and here's where she gets fucked up. Mm-hmm. I was doing Instacart, and they call me and they go, "Hey, so we're trying to find any relatives of your dad, Lester." Uh, we can't really find anybody. It seems like you're the only one in America that's like kind of could be. I'm like, why? Why? What, what is this? Like a fucking insurance scam? What? Do you, who is this? I, I thought it was a telegram. Right. They go, no. He's got COVID because he had. You know what COPD is? Yeah. So he had COPD from cigarettes. Yeah. In the hospital again. And they fucking. Um, they, is he a uh, smoker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He smoked a lot, and he um, they. That's like the Slavic breakfast is a cigarette and coffee. You know? Basically. Or a Cuban cigar and an espresso. Cuban, right? Yeah, express, espresso and Cuban cigar is, is what we, they do. And by the way, Cuban and espresso, I haven't had that in a while, and they're fucking good as hell. They're good I've together, had, yeah. Yeah, it's like a good, perfect combination. And I'm, I'm not a cigar guy, but I can do that. I can sit outside in the summer, mm-hmm. outside of a look, fucking Cuban cafe in Chicago and have one of those. And yeah. Solid. So... He had C- he was in the hospital for COPD and he caught COVID while he was in there because mm-hmm. it was before like Trump made it a big deal or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they tell me they go. So here's here's the deal. If we try to save him, he has a ten percent chance of living mm-hmm. because he has a COPD infection. The amount of oxygen we're going to put in his brain mm-hmm. is going to just fucking like either kill him. Yeah, yeah, it can kill him. Yeah, or it's going to put so much pressure on his brain that the ten percent chance that he does survive. He's going to be paralyzed from the neck down. So I'm like, dude, I wouldn't even fucking wish that on my worst enemy. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, dude, just put him down. And and like, dude, that black cloud, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, I just killed somebody. I just cut somebody. Oh, right. You know, right. I just pulled a plug. I'm driving Instacart, and this motherfucker was fucking with me, doing road rage. He was he was just cutting me off and brake yeah. checked. He brake checked me literally like <clears throat> 10 times within two miles. He just kept fucking brake checking me. And he ended up pushing me into oncoming traffic. I had a head-on collision. They were going to blame me because he took off. I wish I would have had a camera. And there was no cameras in the area because mm-hmm. everything was on lockdown from COVID. Right. Very traumatic year. So what happens next? Next, my uncle fucking died. because I think I did mention this on one of the podcasts, but it yeah. doesn't matter. Long story short, he was a Navy guy. They didn't. They, <coughs> you know, it takes like three months sometimes to dock because you're yeah. out to sea. Yeah. He was feeling fucking weird and like pain. He had prostate cancer. Oh and, wow! And they they were like, we got to give him something to deal with it. So they tried to get. They're like, you know, they're fucking sailors. 
So they try to give him whiskey or vodka. They're like, mm-hmm. no, that's inflaming the pain. Yeah. So they just gave him like Navy issued morphine for like war. You know, when somebody gets their arm yeah. blown off. How old was he? He was in his fifties, I think. Oh, yeah. But he, uh, they give it. So they gave him fucking morphine, and then when he got home, they they find out he's got prostate cancer. So now, the cancer spread like fucking wildfire mm-hmm. because of the stress of the withdrawal from morphine. So he ends up dying. Yeah. Next is my grandma, who I think I mentioned before. Long story short with that, Mm -hmm. as soon as lockdown happened in Poland, if there was a facility, say say a facility is like 500 doctors for 1,000 fucking old people. Mm -hmm. There was like 100 doctors left. Everybody took vacation. Yeah. Because they're like, fuck this shit. So my grandma died from starvation because she, like those fucking commercials, I've fallen and I can't get up. She had varicose veins, so she needed somebody to like guide her out of bed. Yeah. She kept hitting the emergency button, and nobody got her. When they, when, when they fucking got in her room, it was like an Indiana Jones mummy, you know? So. Uh, she, lived, she lived in Poland? Mm-hmm. Oh, so, same with my uncle, the uh, sailor. Oh, he was in Poland, too? Yeah. And weirdly, you know what hit me? Like, obviously those hit me hard, mm. but it hits you harder when you see it, you know? Oh, of course. And and I know it's going to sound weird. It's going to sound so messed up with, with all my relatives. Mm. The thing that hit me the hardest was my cat dying. Because during COVID, what's really weird, I didn't know this. What happened to the cat? So there's a thing called feline coronavirus. And that's been around for decades. Yeah. It's basically a really bad flu. And the way the vet translated it to me is it's kennel cough for cats. <clears throat> right. They get it when they're fucking kittens. And they're in a fucking like foster place, and it's just like filthy there. You know they yeah. don't clean it. So my cat Lucy, it's a lung infection. Yeah, yeah. So my cat Lucy, the black one, mm-hmm. she had it. There's the, this is a different black one that mm-hmm. I have now. She yeah. she had it, and dude, it it hit me because like I never had a pet in my life because my mom was a fucking interior designer. That mm-hmm. was the first pet that liked me. I mean, every day when I came home, mm-hmm. you know how like you can never find this black one. She's usually hiding. hiding. Yeah. Yeah. That's how Lucy was, but when I came home, she she literally would jump on my shoulders and mm-hmm. just chill on my shoulders mm-hmm. like a fucking scarf. Yeah. All day. And you could hear her per- like she- yeah. cuz she liked me so much. And then dude, the thing that was like the thing that was so hard was like I'm that kind of person who like I'll cry if my wife cries. Yeah. I just remember like my cat went from 7 to 10 pounds to like 2 pounds mm-hmm. in a week. It progressed quick. Oh. I remember I just came home one day. You know when you're like working regularly yeah. and doing overtime? You're just like time goes by fast. I remember coming home one day and I pet her. Mm. And dude, it it felt like I pet Bone. a skeleton. Yeah. All you could feel was the s- spine. Yeah. You, could, you couldn't even feel like you couldn't even feel the organs. It was just. And I just remember one day I came home. I laid like. And. She used to just sit on my shoulder. She didn't really, like, lay around me. I just remember, like, this was so messed up. I lay down in my bed. Mm. She hops up, then just drops next to me because she didn't have the energy to, like, lay down. Mm. And she just, like, looked at me. Her eyes were, like, all watery up from the pain. Mm. She just tapped me on my shoulder, like, pat me on the shoulder. Like, Mm. I'm going to go soon. And then literally the next fucking day, I, I I was laid off. Because it was lockdown or whatever, I just remember the next day, I, dude. It's stamped in my mind, my wife w- sobbing, because mm. my cat fucking like crawled behind the heater and just down di- here. Yeah, it died yeah. there. And fucking and then and that happened like kind of crazy. They kind of sensed it, you know. Animals sense that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. fucking crazy. So then, so then, what was that like? That had to be like January. Where the cat died, I think. Mm-hmm. No, maybe, maybe, maybe March. <coughs> and then, sure enough, here's the thing. From my wedding to a little bit after my wedding, I didn't keep in contact with my mom. Yeah. Because she was everything that was that she was going through mm-hmm. was driving me insane. She's with this fucking guy who abuses her, probably right. hits her. Locks, Most likely hits her. Yeah. 
locks her in a room. They're overstayed. I'm not allowed to hit him. She, my mom literally told me told me that if I got in a fight with him, she'd call the cops on me and say that I started it. So she's wanting to be abused. Mm-hmm. Secondly, my mom doesn't want to accept that it's ALS. So she's literally spending like 20 thousands of dollars on going around the world to try and get like holistic help. She went to fucking, she went to Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic. I forgot what the other one is in Minnesota. Maybe that's, <coughs> but she went to every fucking, <coughs> she went to like four clinics in the U.S. Then she went to this guy in fucking Poland who's basically a black magic wizard. Then she went to this like <laughs> fucking, uh, I forgot what it's called. Like, uh, it's for drug addicts. It's not even for, it's not even hell. It's like uh, a rehab center. It wasn't, it wasn't a rehab. It was like a, <coughs> it was like a camp, like a revitalizing camp. Oh, okay. You're talking about like, it's almost like a CBT or something, right? Like a cognitive behavioral therapy. Yeah. yeah. In, in Australia, she went. Okay. Down so, under. She, so, so, and like, dude, me and my brother and my aunt, we're losing our minds because we're like, literally all you have to do is go to one doctor and have that fucking doctor give you set you up with a plan and follow that plan. Mm-hmm. But every doctor kept telling her she's got ALS and she don't want to believe that. So she was yeah. just skipping from fucking stone to stone, you know? Yeah. So and the worst part was around the around like the last <clears throat> literally the last year that I was around her, every time I'm around her, she's cuz she had a clipboard, a dry erase board that she'd write shit on every fucking time. I want to die. Somebody kill me. I can't wait to see God. She's doing this shit in front of my fucking kid, you know. Yeah, so it's like it's like a real downer. Yeah, it's just. And it, and it, yeah, it's, it's not negative. even it's not even fucking appropriate. Like I can't yeah. imagine being a kid, and like, oh, my grandma's suicidal, and she's very open about it. You know, yeah. like. Well, so I I I told my mom I'm like. Every time you mention death, I'm taking like three months from you. You know. Yeah. And what ended up happening is <coughs> I fucking, I ended up around July was, I was going to go visit my mom, but I didn't go because I forgot what, it, I think my brother had COVID. My brother got COVID. So we, we couldn't go visit her. And so so I, I yeah I, I I couldn't visit her and then I'm at work and my brother calls me he's like yo the hospital called us cuz she she something happened where she like collapsed and you she called me about this yeah and she couldn't fucking breathe <clears throat> and she couldn't even reach to call 911 I think my brother like found her on the floor <clears throat> so they take her and they put her on all the oxygen masks you know they put her on the CPAP shit so I kind of didn't get to say goodbye. <clears throat> but what I will say, here's where I wanted to get to the death part that, that was insane. So I go there. And honestly, like, see, this is the thing. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm, I'm the biggest reason why I'm doing this podcast episode is to teach people things that I've learned from my EMDR therapist, from psychologists. I, I was going to school to be a psychologist, so I know this. Everybody fucking grieves differently. Mm-hmm. If you're a fucking cholo on the south side, you're going to, you know... Dr- poor of 40. Yeah, poor of 40. <coughs> fucking paralyze your, your, your dead family member. In and, the standing and, position? Yeah. That one? Sta- <laughs> yeah, with, with a fucking Uzi in his or hand. on a motorcycle? You seen that one? Yeah. <laughs> so, so or you're going to do... Or you're going to dance around with the coffin, you know, do the casket dance. <laughs> everybody <laughs> fucking... Everybody, like... Everybody, everybody grieves differently. That's why they have, like... Uh, ce- instead of a funeral, a celebration of life. That was yeah. the weirdest fucking thing. My my buddy's brother died uh, <clears throat> two years ago, and they had a celebration of life, and it was the weirdest fucking thing. I walked in this funeral home, and they're fucking doing karaoke. You know, like so yeah, probably a better way. Yeah. So, like, I was just like, the reason why I'm, why I give all this this long disclaimer is because I I remember. <clears throat> Just looking at my mom and not feeling anything. I didn't feel shit because mm-hmm. I kept thinking about that be- when I first got abandoned. Like yeah. I was like, that's when she was there dead was a, to There me. was a disconnect there. Yeah. yeah. Like that. that's like, 
at that point, I was like, either she has to make this up <coughs> or the good memories are over what? if she doesn't. it's no, it's There's no other way. Like, there's no way I'm going to remember the good memories because... She has to make it up from this point, from yeah. what, from the damage she's done, and she never wanted to, and so it was like, you know, but the first thing, oh, I, I, th- I forgot, you, I forgot, I was gonna say something that you're gonna remind me of. Oh, when we were talking about that fucking bed bug shit, headboard, the headboard, you know, it's fucked. <coughs> so you remember how I said that? Like I went through all that shit. I was gonna fucking murder my mom, mm. you, you know, and, and like the headboard being in. Inve- you know what? You know what I found out? Mm. My mom was friends with this fucking Polak named Peter. This guy, what he used to do is he would do really cheap headboard jobs and mm. then really expensive ones. And what he would do is he would remove the cheap headboards and then he would custom make the <coughs> he would cover them with expensive material. So every job, so if you wanted a headboard, mm-hmm. you would get something that was used, and he didn't let people know that. Oh, like a fabric headboard? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah. it's like a wooden one. No, no, like, uh, yeah, like it was like a, it, it, I mean, my because of my ma's design, yeah. you look, you looked like you were in the fucking Kardashian house. Yeah. The headboards <laughs> looked like those, they were, they were like masterfully. Victorian, like couches and shit? Yeah. Yeah, I got you. Like a, like a judge's leather seat, you know? Yeah, yeah. So... What he would do is he would fucking do, use use he would make headboards with used headboards. Right. So for all I know, <coughs> he brought them in. He right. brought them in. Yeah. So, but the other thing, so here's here's where I go with this death thing. So so we're standing there, me, my brother, my aunt, and we're looking at my mom. My my wife didn't want to, co- you you know, because the COVID shit, you were you're only allowed a certain amount of people in the room. Yeah. My my wife didn't even want to go in because she yeah. knew it would fucking traumatize her. Yeah, well, I, I get that. Mm-hmm. So we're standing in that room. I didn't even get. I didn't really <clears throat> verbally get to say goodbye because she was hooked up to the CPAP machine, bro. She looked like a dead body, like a dead body. Her face was pale, drooping. In, yeah. And bro, like from, she used to be like a hundred and maybe twenty pounds. She was like sixty pounds. Yeah. I'm not even joking. Got the tube in her mouth too. Yeah. That's how my dad was. Yeah. And I just remember my aunt going like, you have to say goodbye. She's waiting for you to say goodbye. Oh, the other thing that was crazy. So I don't know if you know this, but normal uh, heartbeat, I think it's like 60. 60. And then the other one's like, what, 110 or something? That would be tachycardia. Yeah. Tachycardia. Yeah. So it's 60, 110, right? Mm. The tach, my, you know, my 60 to 100. 60 to 100. Okay. You know, what my Maz was 170. <laughs> For for forty eight hours, yeah, she probably had B tech. So she was fucking fighting it, she was fighting that shit. I mean, you're not even supposed to work out at that much, you know. No, that's that's unsustainable. You should probably have like a super ventricular tachycardia or something like that. Yeah. So when I came there, like her blood pressure's at fucking like one forty or some shit. My aunt's like, yeah, tell her goodbye. I grabbed her by the, like, I'm telling this because I don't believe in supernatural stuff, but I don't know how else to explain this. I grabbed her by the hand. And I'm like, all right, goodbye, mom. And as soon as I said that, fucking blood pressure started going down. Yeah. And, and she died within like two minutes of me saying that. Yeah. And there's two things that are really fucked up about this. Yeah. First thing that <clears throat> this thing really fucked me up. This thing really fucked me up was. So. When I was young. There's this song called Two Kittens. That's Polish. Parents sing. It's like a lullaby. They sing it. Like a Spanish. Yes. Yeah, a Polish lullaby. There's a Spanish one that's. Yeah. yeah that we use too. Mm-hmm. To go to sleep. Right. And I remember when my mom would get beat up by my dad. Uh, she used to sing this song to like calm my nerves because mm-hmm. I was traumatized. You know, mm-hmm. I just heard them beating the shit. Out. Yeah. And I remember her voice clearly when she'd sing it. And it it would calm me down. It would yeah. calm me down. Like it, I I loved it. It was like the most soothing feeling. It's like when people describe taking ketamine. Yeah, yeah, that's what it felt like when you're a kid and you're in terror, and then you get this song letting you know that everything's safe and okay. Mm. Dude, after she died, 
I couldn't sleep for like two, three days. And the third day, I heard her voice in my room singing that fucking song. Yeah. I heard that fucking voice. And the crazy thing is, yeah. I you got to remember, I forgot what her voice sounded like. Because she hadn't the, talked in a while. Yeah, she hadn't talked in like four <coughs> years because yeah. of the ALS. Yeah. So it was, it was, that was, that fucked me up because I couldn't get that fucking, and she's, st- she's still a pain in the ass because I'm not joking. Nightmares nonstop. I don't know if you ever have dreams about your dad. Yeah, I had a, so what's crazy is, you know, I told you I went through like a fucking major depression. Yeah. After my dad died. Um, it's crazy you say that because you know I'm not a, I'm not a fucking religious person, but I am a spiritual person, in the sense that I I do believe that there might be a, there's there's gr- some kind of energy or some shit. Grow out dreads and collect crystals. That's what I'm gonna yeah. do. Yeah, and I'm gonna stop using soaps. Instead, I'm gonna use fucking crystals. Um, <clears throat> so I it was like a few weeks after when the day my dad died. It just it was a one of those light storms where it's not raining and there's no thunder. It's just lights in the sky like lightning. Yeah. And that's exactly how it was the day he died. And, you know, fast forward, I'm going through this shit. I'm literally sitting, uh, sitting in the backyard. I was with uh, Marcel's mom at the time. And I'm just fucking, I'm drinking and I'm, dude, I'm just not in a good place. <clears throat> and I remember sitting there and thinking like, Dude, is it is it is it work? Is it everything? Like, why why am I so fucking on edge? Why am I so fucking mad and easily set off? And obviously, I knew there was things going through. I was going through, but I'm like, I was trying to come to terms with the yeah, you know what? But you know what? He he's gone. So it's whatever. So I I just remember going and I couldn't sleep, dude. And I had gotten into it with my my kid's mom. And I just go downstairs to the couch and I'm I'm sleeping, <clears throat> and I had this dream. That um, me and my dad used to watch movies together. One of the movies we watched together, it's only a hand few that I remember, was E.T. Yeah. And you remember how they had E.T., they hid him in the closet with all these like teddy bears, he's pretending yeah, to be yeah. a teddy bear? So, um, in my fucking dream, I, I, there's just a, a room with a bunch of teddy bears. And, like, I start moving them, and then my dad pops out, like, trying to scare me, like, hey, motherfucker. You know, because like, he would do shit like that. He would fuck with me all the time. Yeah. So, when he came out, my immediate reaction was like, oh shit, like it, like my fucking heart sunk. Yeah. And I was just like, I thought you were fucking dead. Yeah. And he's just like, well, I am. But I just wanted to make sure that you knew, like, so it's, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I just, um, in the dream, I just started crying. And I, I, I woke up, and it was like 2, 3 in the morning. And I'm just sitting there like, fuck, dude. What was that about? Yeah. And then outside, there's fucking lightning storm. And I was just, and and literally that was my, that was the day from there forward that I just started feeling better. Yeah, so, dude. So I, I do, maybe it's in your own mind. Maybe there's something in, yeah. but there's, there's something going on, you know? Yeah, it's I fucked. can't deny it. Like, like, like with me, <clears throat> I know that, you know, you, you want to know the most fucked up dream. I, the most fucked up dream I had was today. I will say that I'm glad that like it's it's good timing with this episode. But yeah. the dreams that I had before. So here's what's crazy. I'm on <coughs> epileptic meds, oxcarbazepine, and the number one side effect is vivid dreams. Yeah. When you take antidepressants, the number one side effect is realistic dreams. What's the difference? Vivid means it's you're active in them. Yeah, right. but but it's but it's also fucking crazy they're they're crazy and they i mean it's like a a vivid dream is like being in an action uh, being in a john wick movie right and uh antidepressant dream is there's nothing weird in it so you it's hard for you to tell a difference between the dream and reality. i got you i got you so like when i had like when i first started taking epilepsy meds i'll give you a quick dream that i had on epilepsy that was cool. I used to keep a deep dream diary because they would happen every night. But I had a dream where I was like, well, my old buddy, Derek, we're fucking driving around in a little rabbit hatchback in fucking coming from a show from Reggie's. And we want to get Chinese food. So we go to Chinatown and this huge fucking. Which is right next to Reggie's. Yeah. 
And then this huge fucking African elephant starts chasing us. And then I'm jumping through fucking people's apartments like it's the Matrix. Mm -hmm. And I land in, I land on this guy's Chinese family's table. Like they're eating and I just like crash through their table. Mm -hmm. And they go, here, use this. <laughs> they give me this fucking ancient Chinese <coughs> da dagger. And when the elephant came, they're like, here, do not use force. And I just dropped the dagger and it landed right in his eye, killed him, and I wake up. Like, yeah. that's a fucking vivid dream. It's right. ju it's just out of control. Right. You know what was weird, too, is <laughs> a, a reoccurring dream that I had that I love for some yeah. reason is plane crashing. Like a plane dis like a plane crashing like a, like 50 yards from me. It's just cool as fuck. I don't, yeah. It's weird. I've, I've had a few times, uh, you ever had the dreams where you actually... In the dream, you realize it's a dream, and you start controlling it. Oh yeah, yeah. They like start flying and start doing shit. I'm like, dude, I was, those are the best. Yeah, <clears throat> but but uh, so on SS, so when I was on antidepressants, here's the most. So so here's what I'm going to tell you: the most fucked up dream involving my mom. The f let me give you an example first of what realistic dreams on antidepressants are like, where you can't tell the difference between mm -hmm. reality. I had a dream when I was on Prozac or Zoloft. I mm -hmm. forgot where i literally just rekindled my like blind bill mm -hmm. i had a dream that we were cool again he gave yeah. me a call we talked over we're cool we're about to go hang out mm -hmm. and i wake up and i was about to call him i'm like wait we're not cool no it was just a dream. right because it almost like transitioned into real life yeah yeah i get that yeah and then i had a dream that <coughs> i was gonna call, i was gonna call this friend of mine <coughs> but they're dead so I looked at my phone. I'm like, why, why aren't they in my phone? Oh, yeah, they died two years ago. Yeah. Another crazy SSRI dream is that I'd have regularly, and it was funny as fuck. I mean, now that I think about it, but I would have dreams where Kelly left me, mm -hmm. and or she or she's going to divorce me. Mm -hmm. And I wake up like in tears. I'm like, Kelly, I'll do anything. I'm sorry. And she's like, get the fuck off me. I'm sleeping <laughs> here. <You know? laughs> like, what are you talking about right now? Yeah. It's like the opposite of the, they say like a lot of women will, will dream that you cheated on them and then they'll wake up mad at you and like, what the fuck? I didn't do shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so here's the most fucked up dream I had on SRIs. Remember how I said like my mom hasn't spoken in four years? Yeah. A year, this was a year before she died. I had a dream. This is when I cut her off because she like was being too mm -hmm. fucking talking about suicide and shit. So um, I had a dream that... My brother, my brother, I mean, everybody knows my brother went through a divorce. He was in a bad spot mentally. <clears throat> so I dreamt in my dream. I, yeah, I also cut my brother off because I was like really mad at him. There's like, you know, it was my wife's best friend. So yeah. I had a dream that I got the call last moment that he killed himself. So I drove over to his house and my mom for five minutes she could speak again and she was just bitching me out that i didn't help my brother that, that this is because of you this is because you didn't get his back and then and then she went back to als it was fucking crazy that yeah. so that's a kind of realistic so anyways the reason why i'm i don't know why i'm mentioning oh you know what happened today is this is so fucking weird i dreamt that me and my this is what I mean like these fucking spirits they don't leave you the f my, my ma leave me the fuck alone like you're annoying in right. death <laughs> but right. she uh, I, I dreamt that I was living just with my brother in the house that we grew up in in Chicago mm -hmm. but we're at this age mm -hmm. and in the dream I woke up in the house like I got up and then I like started walking to get like water and then I felt like this shit take over me and I just heard my mom talking and it was like her spirit was possessing me and I mm. couldn't control myself. And like the whole time I'm trying to talk, my jaws getting stretched in one direction, my shoulders getting popped out of its socket. Mm. And I'm trying to like wake my brother up mm. to help me because mm. I feel like I'm possessed by my mom's spirit. And when I woke up, dude, <laughs> that's why I didn't do shit today. That's why I, I didn't yeah. work today. It fucked me up. It was you just said, yeah, you fucking started the day off with a fucking a panic attack. But you know, it's like, a... like for anybody, for any, yeah, yeah, it is, it is. It's it's worse than a panic attack because you're you're in the most 4K HD simulation, yeah. and you're but you're but the trauma is real. Yeah, yeah. 
But what, to be honest, for anybody listening, like I just started, you know, after taking epilepsy meds for so long, every time that happens, I'm just like, dude, that was a dream. So it was a cool movie that I was part yeah. of. Yeah. Like you just fucking, you rub it off, you know? Right. But so here's the most fucked up thing that I'm going to say about the death thing. Mm-hmm. That I don't know if I ever mentioned this to anybody, but I remember around that time, remember I told you about the lowest point with that bed bug shit? Yeah. So here's what happened. One day. I was at my I was at my mom's house on on in Park Ridge. She's refusing to give me her money. I'm in the worst spot I could be mentally because I'm like number one. I got no friends to go to. They're making fun of me. They cut me off. I have no family to go to. I, I the whole house has locks. I I don't have like no connection to anybody. I there was there was one. Uh, I told myself I'm like I I I don't feel safe with myself, mm-hmm. and this kind of it was kind of funny too. I because I told myself I'm like you know what I'm just gonna go I like I feel depressed and I feel angry. I'm just gonna drive my car in one direction until I cool off, and then when I cool off, I'm gonna tell myself how much fucking gas did you waste on going here. I ended up in Wisconsin, and on the way back I was like, wait a minute, this is Highland Park. Billy Corgan lives here, and I stalked his ass down and went to his oh house. God. <laughs> so <clears throat> I, I drove like in his uh, driveway. Oh but uh, um, what uh, you know, since we just roasted him, you know? yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's got something on you. Yeah, he's yeah. stalking me. He's looking at my address. He's talking about killing his mom. He's gonna kill me. <laughs> but uh, what ended up happening here? Here's the the part that's fucked up. I remember being a kid. There's a Megadeth song called Five Magics. It was always my favorite song. And I never knew I, I like the the song is about black magic. I didn't mm-hmm. really know what it was about. Yeah. What I found out was Dave Mustaine, the singer of Megadeth. <clears throat> he knew how to put hexes on people. And that's what that fucking song was about. Oh. So I was in such a bad place cuz I'm like, yeah, friends abandoned, family abandoned, no connection, no venting, no support. My band's broken up. I have I have no. I, I have literally nothing to make myself feel better mm. other than my wife. Mm. And I was like, I told myself in my head, I'm like, I cannot fuck this up. This is the one. Mm. I had this fucking novel list, literally around 28 girls that were all whores that I didn't give a fuck about. I finally found the person mm. that I could have a good marriage with. I cannot fuck this up. Mm-hmm. And... I got into the I, I I I was so pissed off. I I confronted my mom, and I I was screaming at her. I'm like, I want my fucking money. I want it now. I'm telling you, I'm looking up how to fucking murder your ass. I will fucking shank you when you're sleeping. You better fucking give me my money because I need to get the fuck out of this house. You're driving me insane. I'm getting more and more traumatized by the day. I cannot live in a fucking slave house with all the doors locked. You're a piece of shit. And, and and she goes, okay, I'll give you a just step outside my office. I stepped outside her office. She just slammed the door on me and ignored me and blasted music. And I started screaming. She black- I thought you were going to say she blasted Megadeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> no. <coughs> but she slammed the door on me. And I remember I screamed. And I, I well, well, no, no. And then she turned it off because cause I, was, I was like, I, I got something to tell you. I got one last thing to tell you. She goes, okay, you have one sentence to tell me. And I go, ma, and I fucking crossed my hands in a fucking cross. Like I'm cursing. And I go, ma, I'm putting a fucking hex on you. Because what's going to fucking happen is you're going to move to Florida. You're going to die from some horrendous disease with nobody who loves you, with no family, with no friends. And it's going to be painful as fuck. And I hope you rot in your fucking grave. And you're going to get everything you deserve. And look at what fucking happened. So what you're saying is you have powers. I'm 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 Harry Potter ski. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so no, but it, it was it was fucking it was crazy that that happened because it happened exactly how I described. Like yeah. I'm like now I have to now I got to be the Dalai Lama to repay that fucking karma. <laughs> you're gonna have to fucking quite swing the pendulum the other way as hard as you can. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's. I just, I just know there's so much. I don't know what else there is to say about this episode, but you said everything. It's just, it's just like people need to know. There's, there's different ways of grieving. Time goes by. You know, I, I like. 
the reason why I wanted to do this episode, part of the like the biggest reason is because you had somebody die that you were like close to. Mm-hmm. You, you you cared about him. Yeah. So that's a different perspective as far as me too. Mm-hmm. Because I swear to God, I didn't give a fuck about my mom. I couldn't, for, you know, and everybody kept telling me that's fueled by hate. And I'm like, no, I just, when somebody does so much shit. It was a disconnect. Yeah. You just. You, like if you have a parent that you n- didn't grow up around. Especially, especially it's like you can't, you know, when you compare it to like a fucking animal, like a dog, right? Right. When you have these fucking assholes who like beat the shit out of dogs and they right. end up in a rescue. How can you love somebody that you don't trust? Right. You got to trust them first. So there's I, there's no such thing as a dog that like loves you, but they don't trust you. You know. When it also builds, you know, like, like let's say before that whole thing, you probably had a much closer connection with your mother, and then what ended up happening is at some point, because it's conditional to an extent, you know, you you'll you'll love your mother, you care about them, you care about your parent, but there's a certain point where you're like, yeah, but I don't have a connection with you anymore. Yeah. Like you broke it with me. Yeah. And and yours would happen the other way. Like I didn't have a connection with my father at all, young. And then I started building it over time. It started, started yeah, getting older. Yeah. You had it young and then you got to this point and you're like, I, I can't, you're not my fucking rock anymore. You're not in my yeah, corner. Yeah. I, I, I just, so I just, connect. I just knew that when she got like fucking mesmerized by that American dream greed it fucking it ruined her she wasn't the same person she had fucking dollar signs as pupils like and and you know what that i think that happens to a lot of like that fucking immigrant generation of our parents yeah i can't tell you how many people like you know they're like i I don't understand why my son doesn't love me i have every car i have five cars i have big house it's like yeah but you don't give a fuck or didn't spend any time with your fucking kids you know like and that stuff also is is unfortunate when like you have like somebody that that kind of committed themselves to to keeping up with the Joneses, and those are those crazy kids that go shoot up schools because what they're lacking is a nat- a natural human parent connection. Yeah, because they can be given everything. They have a fucking mansion and shit. People look at it like, well, you know, his parents did everything for him, like well, except the part where they fucking try to be a parent. Yeah, have a connection, speak yeah. to them. That's a that's an unfortunate thing that's happening too, and that's what I look at when I see like. It's always like very well-to-do neighborhood kids that, that go and do these things, and it's it's because there's nothing that that parent says is all you gotta. All, the only thing I have to do is provide you with the luxuries. It's like yeah. no, you don't actually. All you have to do is you put a roof over my fucking head and still spend time with me and enjoy some of the things I do and speak to me yeah. about things instead of losing your fucking mind. You know. Now, yeah, and and now it's like you know like here's 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 how much it's so funny because. It's like you, see, you know, they they talk about that nature versus nurture, and the funny thing is, like, I don't even want to, I don't even know if I should mention it, but yeah. I will. Like with my brother, he would say all this shit that, like, oh, you know, it's natural for us to to be like our parents, because he took all those flaws. He has all the flaws that my mom, he has a lot of the flaws that my mom had. The nostalgia, the escapism, the running from your problems instead of facing them, you know. And me, bro, I, I felt like a fucking Lone Ranger my whole life. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever accepted me. That's why I'm doing, that's why I'm feeling so fucking like confident in comedy. Cause I'm like, yeah. I could do whatever the fuck I want. And whoever likes yeah. it, they can come, you know, approach me about it. Gravitator but, dunk. Yeah, but it's just like, yeah, I, I can't tell you like everything I learned about like the flaking, the not spending. Like, I remember the thing that used to drive me insane. Was I was like my biggest babysitter was our fucking satellite TV. That's why I became a movie nerd. I can I'm filled with so many useless facts about movies because okay. I watched every fucking IFC channel, HBO, Cinemax, like oh, yeah. all this shit. You were like, uh, what's his name from the cable guy? Oh yeah, <laughs> that was me. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking the password is <laughs> penis. You know, but I yeah I like I I. I would ask my mom all the time, can you just please, like, watch a movie with me, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, when I retire. When I retire. Ha <laughs> when I retire. Like, bro, that breeds abandonment. That fucking breeds. I, I still re- And that's a funny thing. That's why I was confused with m- my mom and my dad was because I don't remember the last time we, w- we like, spent time and watched a movie together. And, the, and one of the last memories I have with my dad 
that would always like put a lump in my throat was hmm. even though he was getting drunk, he had me in his lap and we watched the Pink Floyd live DVD all the way through the Pulse yeah. DVD. Yeah, yeah. He watched it all the way through because that was his favorite band. Yeah. And I just remember that was a fucking great night. You know, yeah. like that's all these kids need, man. Yeah. It's all they need is like so for you to fucking, fucking make them part of your world. Yeah, it's it's so fucking easy to do, but it's just like these fucking parent like they focus they focus on money instead of anything else, and it's just ridiculous. Money's, money's a necessity. Yeah, and that's why I always like did this thing where it's like I'm working, but I need to make sure that my priority I, I I balance my time and I'm with my kid and I try to engage in some of the things he likes and stuff. That's why people I, I've heard I've seen people like, you know, you shouldn't make your child your friend. Like, no, he understands that I'm still his father and he has to do what I say. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I can't joke with him and play his games with him Dude, and that, stuff. Like, that whole friend shit, a lot of times I feel like that's people who say that, like, you shouldn't make your child your friend. That's that's their excuse. They're being, like, domineering. That's their excuse for not having a connection. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm being this way. I'm, I'm, I'm being this way. I'm doing this because well, I don't it, want to be his friend. It's, like, it's, also, it's also people that, like, they're... Their version of having a success, like a, being a successful parent, is well. My son, I gave it to him hard, and look at him now. He's a lawyer. Yeah, he's probably fucking miserable doing coke yeah. lines and getting hookers every night. You know why? Because that fucking that love, that attention, that fucking shit you should have given him was way more important than you setting him in a path that would just make sure all your friends around you thought you were did great. Yeah, it's just not. And then, and a lot of people that say that talk like that, I realize, like, well, you know, you can't be their friend. I'm like, why? Well, so why, why, why? I'm not, I'm not being his buddy in the sense that I'm not still the person in the house who calls the shots and, and makes the rules. Yeah, I'm just being part of it. I, I realize that some of those people, it's just because their their version of what they want their child to do is for them to contort their that child to be what they want them to do. Yeah. No, you got to give them. You gotta be an authoritarian around you the house. Teach and them lessons. You lessons, know? but you could teach like lessons I, anyway. Like I always say, like, because I'm kind of that parent who's like way too much fun to where my kid, like, sometimes he doesn't take me seriously because I'm mm -hmm. goofing off too much. So I, I, I try to balance it with being fun and 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 happy and like joyful. But then you gotta have your what I call like Mr. Miyagi moments where yeah. you sit down and you gotta teach him a true lesson of life, how to be a fucking man. You know, yeah. like, well, yeah, exactly. And then, and also, like, you're still, you're still, you're still dad around the house. Yeah. Just so to be like, hey, go, 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 fucking clean up your room, all right? Yeah. Like, I don't have to, I don't want to ask you to shit again. Yeah. If they know that you can joke with them and you can bullshit with them, then they'll know in your demeanor when you're mean something like you know serious. That, like, you, I need you to go do this. You know that shit about the fucking. You, you, I was just, I was just arguing with this. We, we, we got time to bullshit, right? Yeah, a little I, bit. Yeah, yeah. When, when, whenever you want to, like, but uh. You're good. I was just fucking. I was just talking about this shit with a friend of mine about how all these motherfuckers like like it just shows you how selfish that whole fucking boomer generation is. Mm -hmm. Because what do the boomers blame school shootings for? What do they fucking blame? Oh, them? video games. Video games. Mu it was uh, mu music for a while. It was music with Tipper Gore. Where they fucking had her and the de stupid tipper called. <laughs> fucking they had they had Jello from Dead Kennedys, Ice T, Run DMC, and fucking Kiss for a while. Mike from uh, Suicidal Tendencies. They had them all on on, on uh, Phil Donahue. And oh, I thought you meant like uh, the people they were blaming. Yeah. Oh yeah, talking about how this violent music like, she and it's like, bro, you know what I always fucking tell people? I go, you can't make spaghetti with just fucking noodles. You need a little garlic. You need a little olive oil. You need the meatballs. You need little, the gravy. Little basil, a little basil. Leaf. You need you need that. That's it's a fucking recipe. Mm -hmm. And what I'll tell you, yeah, violent music is part of the recipe, but it's probably ten percent. Call of Duty playing, it's probably ten percent. Being garnish. a sh being a shithead fucking parent, it's probably sixty percent. Yeah. Like that fucking guy in Highland Park with the Bobby Cremo. Yeah. He bought him the fucking gun, mm -hmm. like. And and he's like, oh, we we didn't see any signs. He has a music video where he's shooting up the school. You didn't yeah. see any signs. Yeah, it's, so you 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 address these fucking things, and and I think honestly, like a lot of people, they, people uh, people who don't blame the parents are people who are lazy fucking parents. Right. They they don't want to take responsibility. They coddle they, they they coddle them like, no no, it wasn't you. You did everything fine. I don't know if you did. 
it, it seems to me, and I'm, I'm telling you because I, I just, I, I do a lot of like analysis on, on like humans when, when they do some disgusting shit like that. And, and it, I always, I always come up with some of the same few things, some of the same behaviors, a very disconnected parent at home that doesn't know what the fuck their kid is doing. Yeah. Like, a kid, for example, a 15 year old, let's say you have a 15 year old and you like to go out hunting with your son. That's one thing. One that's got a couple AKs in his fucking room. It's like, oh, why? We're not hunting. You know, you, you start thinking about self defense when you maybe you're older, you have a house and a family, right? Yeah. But I don't know. It just it doesn't fucking make any sense to me. That's one thing. The other thing I, I've noticed is that there's always. What's always involved is that this person has one parent missing in the home. One. Yeah. And it's usually left, the one parent that's left is a, is a perpetual victim. It's me, you, me, you me. Know, you, know, you know what's funny about that Highland Park shooter guy? Is that What's funny about him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know what's it's funny? He's a funny guy. He's, he's a little bitch. And, mm. the re- and, I, and I don't say that out of hate. Like, like, obviously, I'm sure every fucking victim... It said the same thing. He's a little bitch. But he, but here's the biggest reason why he's a little bitch. All those fucking shooters. Not only are they single parents, but here's the thing. This is where it, this is where immigrant mentality comes in. Because let me tell you, if my fucking kid is that age, he's got fucking face tattoos, wants to be a wigger SoundCloud rapper, bro, I'm either rear naked choking you or throwing you out of the fucking house. Now, how are you gonna afford a gun doing that? You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. And that's why first this, off, this you're not getting fucking face tattoos until you're old enough to actually make some fucking decisions in yeah. life. And, so, then, and, and and look at these parents; they're like, "Oh, he's got he's got his face tattoos, he's got his rap career, and we want to support him, and we want to get him an AR-15." You know, s- bro, support him less. Punch him in the face and throw him underneath a fucking bridge so yeah. he makes a Red Hot Chili Peppers song. Like, it's it's like, yeah. why, like sometimes you got to be that hard. Whatever you know, you choose that. <coughs> And maybe, guess what? When you do that, maybe he'll fucking crawl back and turn himself around. Yeah. That's what that does. You also have, like... That's just... I mean, you... you, I don't know what it is. I feel like a a lot of these these people... Dudes, let's be real. They're all dudes. They're deprived of, of the attention they need at home. So they go out and they start lashing out by getting fucking face tattoos and putting up making a bunch of fucking goofy videos of shooting up schools and stuff they just they need that like wow that fucking reaction they need to have that attention and to an extent you're like that's an attention seeking little shit and then it's like well but why well, is he has he not gotten it at home has you, he not you know, been getting you know, it does he not have good friends I, or you know I, I don't know if this is a weird theory i just thought of this right now but i kind of feel like there's no the only thing that's like punk rock right now like punk rock is a genre of music but this is a lifestyle. Yeah, but too. it was it was a behavior. It was an attitude. Yeah, too. and yeah. so and so the attitude of punk rock now, it shifted. They they corporatized it. Right now, to be punk rock is to be like pro trans. That's mm. okay, mm. but at the same time, it's not even punk rock because you got a whole, you have a flood of people who do the same thing. So right. you're not really you're not really doing what you believe in. You're following like a sheep with a cr- fucking herd. Yeah, I, I feel like and the s- attitude that that was punk rock is right now would be for you to be a family man. Yeah, yeah, th- it is. It's the most punk rock thing to it, do. Right? You can't like yeah, but fuck so, you. I'm not doing that. I'm but, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm raising my family. I'm yeah. having a kid. And what the fuck is wrong yeah. with you? I'm gonna be rich and successful while you bitch about being poor. And, yeah, and, and that I'm privileged. Like yeah, that's exactly. But it. And, and and the funny thing is like, but 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 that's what I was getting to is like being a school shooter. I think in their mind kind of seems like punk rock because that's what nobody wants you to do. Everybody wants you, dude. Just talk to somebody. We'll be your friend. Mm. And I think somebody out there like me needs to be like, bro, you want to shoot up the school? <laughs> you're a bitch. Go ahead. Mm. Go ahead. Do it. See, how you're not going to have any legacy. Yeah. Like, why? Like, just do yourself in. Why you got to do it? Like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You're just going to look like a more of a loser, you know? Yeah. And they need they I, I, I'm probably going to get canceled for saying this shit. But no, I mean, like, it's, it's also some the, of them. They just have like this like narcissism. Yeah, it, it really does. It's like. 
me, me, me type of fucking thing. It's all about me. And if, uh, but you know, you know, it's interesting. Like, I don't even know if I should mention this because it'll fucking cause controversy or something. But it's just like, here's here's what I I said this shit, and <laughs> dude, dude, the guys that I worked with were laughing their asses off at me. But here's here's what I was saying. Being a fucking immigrant, not even just immigrant, but just just rejection alone. Nobody wants to be an individual now, and mm-hmm. and the and and my feeling was, my whole life I never fit in, I mm-hmm. never fucking fit in, bro. I was like, I was a metalhead, but I was too happy and goofy to be metal. Right. Metalheads are always depressed and, and and angry. Yeah, and then I was like on the football team, but I hated watching football. Watching football is the most boring shit to me in the fucking world, but I love playing it. Yeah. And then it's like, what else was I into? It was like, I mean, it was it was just constantly. I'm 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 into black metal, but I don't take it seriously. Fucking old dudes in makeup, you know, or top hats. I, I'm into comedy, but I have edgy humor. I'm ne- I accepted a long time ago that I'm never gonna fit in, and I just don't give a shit. And that's it. That's what that, I was trying to get to. That that makes me people happy. people people need to have acceptance. Yeah. And they and they can't quite fit themselves into these boxes. Yeah, they fucking lose their minds. But that's that's why I feel like a lot of these people who are already individuals, mm. and I'm saying this strictly for like mental health reasons because I mm. went to fucking psychology, studied psychology and shit. I feel like a lot of people who look towards trans as like their outlet, they just want to be themselves. So they think, oh, I'm going to go trans. They're a really accepting community. Well, give it a few years. Pretty yeah. soon they're going to be like, well, you're not real trans. You're a poser trans. You know, like yeah. it's like pre-op you just or got, post-op. You just have to be proud of being your fucking self. If you're a feminine fucking man, be a feminine man. Be the fucking mm. the the dude in Beetle, Beetlejuice, the fat dude. You know, like, yeah. I also feel like some of these people, they are they're so deprived and in need of a, of pats on the back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause oh well, I'll get them here. I'll, I'll get them here. And people like me and you accepted years ago that we're just not going to be liked and received by most people. But we enjoy the fucking world we're living in. It's our own fucking little world. Yeah. So so that's those people are more likely to to just hold true to themselves and what they actually believe. And they might change their mind about things, but but you you you've accepted where you are. And and this I'm gonna take it back to David. David, uh, he. His his the issue the reason he's where he's at now, is because his his whole identity was based on all the people who surrounded him, yeah. all the people that gave him like oh oh that's that's white boy that's this that's that and all the parties and all the things yeah. but he there was nothing about him that was him, yeah and I think it's still not that that he's got, identity he's got an identity crisis. crisis I really do believe that yeah well um, what I what I was getting at, this is what made my coworkers laugh is I was like dude if I was in high school right now, it would be very hard for me to be the individual that I was because of the pressure of all these like social movements now. And I would not be surprised if I went through a fucking trans phase just because I wanted to fucking right. be accepted. Right. Because that's what these fucking kids want. The kids, they're kids. Like, yeah. And it's like, you could, you could like, you could be, you could be a fucking, I don't know, YouTuber. You could just be an artist. Like, I don't know, man. It's, it's just, the limit right now. Yeah. It, it stretches so, to everything. That's the other thing too, that I argue with, 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 with these other, this this it, it was so funny because I went, so remember how I said I went to this like really rich wedding. Mm-hmm. One of the the groom's friends was this really uppity yuppie guy. He's like a fucking engineer for some science mm-hmm. company. And when I was talking to him, he was kind of like this guy. It's fucking wild, Phil. What the fuck? Yeah. You know, this guy's a fucking like fuck st- street guy? rat. You know. Yeah. And then when I told him this, he's like, "Oh my god, I guess you'll find genius in the, all the weird places." Because what I said was. You know what else is interesting that nobody talks about is like the reason why I think there's so much anxiety is because there's so many fucking expectations for these mm. people. Like here's here's what I'm saying. Here's what people don't understand. Back in the day, back in fucking 19 pre-internet, 1980, maybe even 1990, right? 90s, yeah. It'd be like, "Yo, how come you ain't married?" or whatever. Or or if you wanted to get laid, what if you were from a small town? If you're from a town of thirty thousand people, mm-hmm. the only the only chicks you're gonna get are from that town, and not yeah. only chicks, the only jobs you, you're you're not gonna have a fucking dream. You can't be like, yo, um, I really want to be a nurse. Well, you're gonna be whatever 
the people in your town are hiring. You might yeah. be a fucking usher at a theater, yeah. or you might be the oil change guy. Right. You got, you're just it's based on luck because back in that day, people you didn't have fucking you didn't like you didn't look for jobs thirty miles away from your right. house. Right. Now here's why people feel worse now. There's no community because they don't have girlfriends. So it's like you don't have a fucking girlfriend. You're not you're not socially awkward like good enough to have a girlfriend. But look at the opportunity that you could have one. All these dating sites. Mm-hmm. So not so like you were just a level one piece of shit mm-hmm. for not having a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever. But now that you have, you literally could find anybody. It's like mm-hmm. that Sebastian Maniscalco joke yeah. where he's like, all these freaks, these guys. Yeah, that he I goes, didn't... aren't you embarrassed? Yeah. He goes, now you got a community, right? So yeah, you're, yeah. you're getting at. Yeah. yeah, these guys that identify yeah. as infants, you know? Yeah. Like you can literally find anybody, but, yeah. you, but you're not. Mm-hmm. And same thing with jobs. Mm-hmm. They're saying like, you could literally fucking work any job. You have you have you can look it up on the internet, but you're not able to. And I don't know what that is. It's it, you know it, it gives people depression and anxiety, but at the same time, bro, you're kind of spoiled. Cause cause I don't know if you get this. I never worried about immigrant mentality. I go on Indeed, and I'm like, I could do eighty percent of these jobs on on the on the page. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't fucking care if it's school bus driver, if it's delivery truck driver, right. if it's two men in a truck so moving. I've done two fucking three jobs at once. Yeah. Trying to figure out where the hell I was going to make, where I was going to be making money, but at the same time, it wasn't going to consume my fucking life. Yeah. And and I bartended. I fucking, I fucking worked at a, we're talking about a job, shitty warehouse. I yeah. went to go do car sales like a yeah. fucking scumbag. And I'm dude, like, and, I'm going to figure it out. And, and, and that's the thing. Life is about rejection. Yep. I'm I'm at that I, I'm literally like I've I've learned that so much in jujitsu and now I'm learning it in comedy. Mm-hmm. I literally go on stage right like dude last night I went on fucking stage. Mm-hmm. I said the most bizarre shit and mm-hmm. I got the most fucking laughs. Yep. And I'm like no like dude I got such a because I just did that uh, thing at Lincoln Lodge with the, where, with the polished six minutes. The one you show me. Yeah, yeah. and I did amazing. So mm-hmm. I'm like dude I, I I'm feeling so high right now. I need to be humbled, so I'm just yeah. going to go and bomb. And I go, and I didn't bomb because I just said whatever the fuck was on my mind. And it's, I think life, you should be chasing rejection. You should mm-hmm. be chasing it because you learn so much fucking more. Mm-hmm. Work at a 100 different fucking jobs and yeah. see what it's like. You know what I was going to do now that I don't really have to work? Yeah. I, was, I, I know this is illegal, so I probably couldn't. I was going to wear a fucking hidden camera and just work at jobs for like a, a full week and then put it on YouTube. Oh, They're like oh, oh, this is like this is what it's like to be a school bus driver. Well, no, you have seen the guy that tic- he's a TikToker who just who just did like phony fucking interviews, this guy, uh, Zoom interviews. No, I didn't. He was like he would just he would just talk and like make a face like that, and the interviewer would be like, um, okay, like you, you haven't seen that guy? No. Oh, I'll find him and I'll send him was to he, you. Is it that Arby's guy? Arby's weird guy. Arby's guy. No, no, you're talking about the guy who like speaks like he's fucking. Like in, 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 in like having a panic re- renaissance fucking times and shit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah no, yeah. that it's a different guy. It's a guy who during lockdowns was just setting up phony fucking interviews, like Zoom interviews. Yeah. And he would just be on like with his shirt off. So he was I, pretending to be the boss? No, he was interviewing for jobs. He was interviewing so for jobs. Pre- so he was looking to be the applicant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, playing another call. Like, so they say you have it. And one of them, like, you just say horse shit. Like, so like he applied for some office job. He goes, yeah, well, I one time I used to clean an office, so like you know, he was like bullshitting, and on one of them he just had a shirt off and he was running on the street. He goes, "I'm not gonna stop my run for this. Want to let you know I'm super motivated." And he's interviewing with like six people, and they're all like, "Uh, what the fuck is going on?" I'll find him, but he's yeah. a like a funny interviewer guy, and he I don't know, he just fell off out of nowhere. Yeah. But yeah. Well, yeah. To end this episode off, yeah. I guess we were saying like we were talking about grief. The last thing is grief. Yeah. I just think it's different for one thing I forgot to mention is my fucking aunt. Like that's that that's that's the crazy thing. Remember I said my aunt used to like talk shit my mo- mom. Mm-hmm. That's why she cut us off cuz she's like in tremendous guilt. That oh, that's what I was mentioning before was that I'm glad that we did this because you said like we had the reverse experience where you were getting closer mm-hmm. to that mm-hmm. and me I still got that feeling of guilt of yeah. Even though it was somebody who was fucking traumatizing. Yeah, because it's like, 
that it's twisted. But they, t- I, I talked about this with like psychology with a psychologist and a therapist mm-hmm. that like when you end a relationship, even with like even though you're like a victim, it's hard to get used to not having that world. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It's sort. It's sort of like if you have a dog that's fucking in a cage all day and gets mm-hmm. bottles thrown at it all day. It's mm-hmm. hard for him to leave that cage. Because he's right. like used to that fucking. It's got life. like a. It looks like a learned behavior. It's a learned. Uh, yeah. It's a learned like mentality at this point. Yeah. So, like, I mean, in the end, I just put it. I was like, dude, I did. We did everything we could. Yeah. I didn't do anything wrong by trying to avoid her talking about suicide by my kid. Yeah. And like, I just, I gotta move. The, the, how, how, what do I do to move on? By having the exact opposite, an unbelievable family. With zero trauma, you know, like right. just you, you, being, you build your own next being legacy. Being a punk rock family man, you know. Yeah, well, that's I think yeah. It's, you ever seen the movie, um, the other F word? No. It's a it's a movie about all these punk dudes and like when they became fathers and the F word was F father. Yeah. But it goes through all these people that that had fucking trauma growing up, and I actually uh, particularly uh, appreciated uh, the story told by the what's the singer's name from Everclear. You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. I don't know his name. Like he, was, he was just saying, like, he had a fucked up dad. He was that was a piece of shit. Yeah. And uh, and you know, che- saw- and Chester, you know Chester, uh, from uh, Lincoln Park. No, no, no. The other dude. Uh, it's an. I'll, I'll come up to me. But the mo- the doc the movie was good. It's like a documentary where I talked to these guys and they're like, you know, we this was like who we were. We were fucking punk dudes, but but like then we became family people. Yeah. And that become you know when you get into that family. Then you realize, like you kind of go, you kind of steer away from the fuck everything type of thing, yeah. and you're like, no, I, you know, I love everything about my family, yeah. and this is what my new fucking what the hill I'm gonna die on. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's called the other F word. What the? What, who do you thought? I don't know any other Chester's. Uh, hello. The molester. Yes. I'll tell you right now. He seems like a good father. Uh. You know, I saw Everclear two years ago. You saw who? Everclear two years ago. They're still playing? You know where they played? Where? Schomburg Fest. I'm not even joking. Schomburg Fest? Yeah. I saw this years ago. Well, you don't got the cast? Well, did they actually interview this guy right there, dude? Because they actually interviewed a uh, uh, flea too. Yeah, that's flea. This guy. I don't know who that is. Yeah, he's from fuck, man. Fall Up Boy. No, no, it's it's one of those like fucking dirty punk bands. Rancid. It wasn't rancid. It, it, it'll, it'll, if you watch it, you'll Green Day, know. no effects. I don't know. Well, maybe if I just pull up the ca- right the cast, maybe I'll see it. It's all good. We should uh, we should wrap this up. All right, for Sherman. So uh, it's a good talk. I, don't I think know. it's Chester Daniels. Chester Daniels. Yeah, I think it's Chester oh. Daniels. Yeah. You want to look at? No, it's good. So it's not a cliffhanger. It's up to you. Oh, fuck it. Just do like okay Google. What is Chester Daniels in? Uh Do you have that? Where you can you can okay Google? This I'm not, since I got this phone, no, it's just fucking tweaks out. It doesn't even pick it up correctly. And the, the Everclear singer, his name was Art. Mm-hmm. No, I'm an asshole. It's not Chester. It's all right, it's, all it's, right. it's it's Dwayne Peters, man. <laughs> it's Dwayne Peters. And he's in what? He's in uh, U.S. Bombs. Oh, okay. Yeah, but for some reason, I remember, that's why I remember his hat said Chester because his son's name was Chester. Oh, yeah. And the, he's talking about his his son getting killed in a car accident. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a good father, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so, uh, so yeah, that was a good talk. We'll uh, wrap it up on this serious episode. I hope it helps somebody. And uh, we'll see you next time with a cool guest. We'll see who it is. Peace out, boys.